Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the second classical game of the semi-finals Grand Prix Jerusalem. Uh, well, uh, two um, two matches, four players, one semi-final being of much more impact to the qualification to the candidates. Maxim Vashielograf and Jan Nepomnishi pretty much playing the finals of the Grand Prix. Yeah, that's what uh, a lot of uh, people like to put it. Um, still, it needs to be said that first of all, first of all, Maxim Vashielograf will have a shot. Yeah, the reminder, he has lost yesterday, but he will still have a shot at equalizing the score today. Even if he loses, Jan Nepomnishi will need to win the final then, otherwise it's still going to be Frenchman who qualifies to the candidates, takes the second spot in the overall Grand Prix count. Uh, the other match, David Navarra and Wei, as I keep saying, they are not fighting for the qualification anymore, but they are fighting for honor, they are fighting for the winner's trophy as well as a huge chunk of a prize fund. The games are about to begin, so once again the reminder, Jan has won the game with White and in the other semi-final we've seen a draw after, well, perhaps few missed opportunities by both players very, very early in the opening. And yeah, and we are about to see first move from David Navarra. Maxim opens with one D4 and that's really, really unexpected, I have to say, because getting to a studio in Moscow today. I've spent quite some time thinking of uh, a possible night of line Maxim will pick in order to surprise Jan Nepomnishi. And instead, uh, well, that's once again the story behind those two players, for those who possibly missed it yesterday. And once again, welcome you guys in the YouTube chat in, on World Chess. Uh, thanks for participating in the discussion. Thanks for... Uh, joining me in the studio, yeah. So the story between those two is, in fact, they both play kind of the same, they, they both possess same opening repertoire when it comes to black pieces. So it's the Knight of Sicilian as the main, most common, and in case of Maxim Vashielograf, perhaps the only reply to one E4. And then versus one D4, both players, Jan Nepomnish and Maxim Vashielograf, almost exclusively play the Grunfeld. Speaking of the Grunfeld, we do have the Grunfeld in the other semi-final already. Uh, right, so that means that they know each other's opening very well. They know where the kind of the tiny spot is, well, the, you know, and they might come up with some sort of a targeted preparation. Right, so for this particular game, Maxime Vashielograf has chosen 3h4 as the reply to knight f6, g6. Not a, not a very popular move, well, really surprising one. Uh, people in the chat say, Sasha move indeed. Uh, Alexander Grishuk has played the very same line against uh, Maxime Vashielograf himself in the Grand Prix Riga. Yeah, and he did lost. Uh, he, he did lose after h4. Uh, right, Jan Nepomnishi replies with bishop g7, interestingly, kind of ignoring the, the h-pawn. Ignores hurry for move. Uh, right, well, Maxim's move on move 3 was c7, c5. So it, it was the line that was played by Alexander Krishuk, but I don't think he will take credit for this line because as far as I remember it was previously played by no one else but Veselin Topalov in the candidates Moscow which year it was against Anish Giri. What's the time control people ask in the chat? It's one hour, well that's a classical game so uh, very usual time control for the classical games. It's uh, 1 hour 30 for first 40 moves with, um, with um, half an hour addition to each player's clock when they reach move 40 with 30 seconds increment. With 30 seconds increment. Uh, yeah. 
The brackets for this tournament, once again, the road to the semi-finals. Maxim Vyshelograph knocking out Veselin Topalov and Dmitry Andrekin, both on a tie-break. Same, both matches won on a tie-break by Jan Nipomnishi. First, Boris Gelfand and then Wesley Saw. Wei Yi won two tie-breaks as well against Anish Giri and Sergei Karyakin. And the only player who has won a match in a classical chess was David Namara. It was round two when he knocked out Dmitry Akovenko. Yeah, so we do have we do have quite an interesting opening position already. So we will start analyzing it very soon. But before that, once again, uh, let's give the credit to the companies who made this event possible. So for Sagra, strategic partner of the Grand Prix series, Algorand, the blockchain partner. Kaspersky, cybersecurity partner, and the partner of event in Jerusalem, Ustec. And once again, today, it seems we have some lag with the analysis board, but luckily that's not such a, such a fast-paced game, so I'll be able to reconstruct what is happening. So 3H4. Uh, basically, kind of denying the Grunfeld for the time being, right? d5 doesn't really make sense over there, because white captures, and there is no knight on c3. So it's not only h4 that you can avoid the Grunfeld. Uh, there are like other, other moves which should make an immediate d7, d5 not good, right? h4 with the clear intention to play h5 as soon as opportunity presents itself. Um, the above-mentioned game between Grishuk and Maxim Vashyalograph saw the transposition to the Benko Gambit or Benko Gambit-like positions, where me, uh, the move H2, H4 is arguably not very useful. Something like that. I don't quite remember what was uh, Black's next move. Perhaps bishop g7. Uh, what I do remember, you kind of supposed to postpone capturing on a6 for a little bit. Yeah, so h2, h4 in this case is not very useful. Let's agree on that. So c5 was a legit uh, try. Jan instead replies with bishop to g7, knight c3 played, d7, d5. Now that's an interesting twist, because it would be the real Grunfeld with 4h4, right? We could get this position with 4h4. And then I don't really think that you're supposed to play bishop g7 in this case. And now that I'm thinking, what's the, what's the, what's the actual move in this position? Because this was played for quite a few times. And, and this, technically, you can call Grishuk variation, because uh, he was one of the first to play it against uh, Magnus. Oh, no, wait a second. It was the other way around. It was Magnus trying it against Grishuk a few years ago, 5h4. So I'm trying to understand the possible transpositions, right? Bishop to g7, uh, knight c3, d5, h5. And Jan, well, interestingly, Jan reacted quite quickly. So it seems that it's one of the lines he's familiar with, and he was checking it up recently. Knight takes h5, c takes d5. I believe e6 was played. g4, knight f6, takes on e6, and... Maxim went for e2, e4. Very, very aggressive strategy. Uh, very, very aggressive strategy, sacrificing the g4 pawn immediately, trying to seize the center. Uh, well, that perhaps, uh, that perhaps is the strategy you have to go for in a must-win situation, right? Good strategy in the must-win game, precisely. Mm. 
Yeah, once again, uh, uh, replying to messages in the chat, it's absolutely correct. Uh, MVL needs to win, uh, well, this game at first place to level the score and then to win the match to guarantee himself the qualification to the candidates. On the other hand, if he loses, he is still not completely out of business because then it will be up to the Pomnishi to win the final. So it's still a bit tricky. Yeah, so let's see what happens after, after G4. I suspect, doesn't matter what black takes with, Wild will, White will try to play, uh, well, perhaps plays d5 very next move, now that I'm thinking. Well, it's actually tricky. Hang on a second. So, if Bishop takes, I suspect there are, there are options for White after Bishop g4. Because technically, you could play Bishop e2, and I know it's a little bit slowish, right? Capture with the knight and then develop the bishop somewhere, go queen b3 or queen a, not sure, queen b3 for instance, castles long. I suspect the whole story is about uh, castling long in this case. Yeah, you don't really castle short not having h and g pawn. Yeah, if the knight takes however, it's a little bit trickier because d4 pawn is hanging as well. Ah, then perhaps you play bishop e2 first targeting the knight on g4. So if the knight goes back, you can continue developing. Well, the sacrifice on f2 in this case, I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I was briefly considering something like that, where black gets three pawns, gets three pawns for the minor piece, but still with such a lot of uh, pieces on the board, it's more of a middle game position where normally minor piece should be worth more than three pawns. So I don't think it's a, it's a good idea. It's not clear if it's a good idea to capture the g4 pawn at the first place. Well, probably you should, because otherwise white is getting a lot of space advantage, well, more or less for free, right? Ah, looks like a weird gambit d4, knight f6, g4. There is such there is such line which was always bothering me a little. I mean, looks like black can capture safely and then play the, you know. Perhaps uh, we can describe this one as a lack in defense with black being a tempo down and white not having the g-pawn. So that uh, has to be perfectly playable for black. So, so uh, our current position, in fact, does look... No, no, well, that, that's the current position of the E4. Does look somewhat similar. You're right, guys. Yeah, it does look somewhat similar. So once again, knight G4, if bishop B2 played, we do not go for knight F2. We probably go back to F6. Then white perhaps continues developing. Knight F3, bishop to G5. Some queen d2 castle long once again. Ah, so that's Kilkenny Gambit. That's how it's called. d4, knight of 6, g4. I don't really... Th well, I mean, I don't know the name, but... It's like, I don't really think it's a sound opening, but yeah, for the blitz, for the rapid, and perhaps for the game, uh, for the game that you need to win at any cost and perhaps do not, you know, do not really care too much if you lose it or make a draw. Uh, so bishop takes g4 has to be played here, people say. Uh, well, perhaps. So what did I say? Bishop e2 is one thing. You probably don't want to play f3, that's the feeling even though it does seem to be kind of a move with a tempo, but Black's bishop was somewhat misplaced on e6 as well, right, with white having the potential threat of d4, d5. So I don't think Black would mind it all that much, putting the bishop back to c8, then castling short. 
I mean, it will be a tricky situation because, yes, indeed, castling short seems to be dangerous. You castle into White's open files, into White's attack. But at the same time, you know, White's, White's own king in his, is in the center. So it will take White some time to castle long. Otherwise, there might be some counterplay from Black. So let's think of... Um, the position like this. Oh, well, well, maybe queen d2, castle long, bishop h6. That actually develops pretty quickly. So in a way, it'll be, it'll be similar to some other anti-Kronfeld lines, namely this one, f3, d5, takes over here, e4, knight, b6, and this is where White, I mean, it's one of the one of the possibilities. It's not uh, the only one, obviously, but that's one of the lines where White is trying to go queen d2, then castle long and march with his h pawn, right? So now, if something like this happens on the board and Black captures on g4 with the bishop, yes, then f3, bishop e3, queen d2 might be very interesting. Yeah, precisely. It's like f3 anti Grunfeld without g2, h2, and e7. Yeah, but now that I'm thinking, if we seemingly the YouTube chat agrees with me that castling short looks really dangerous, but does black really have other options? Or maybe maybe we should think of this position where Yanni Pomishi is thinking right here. Does black have some other options? Possibly not taking the pawn on g4 at all. Could this be the case? What do you do then? That's a good question. Is there some weird case where you where you want to go h5 now that I'm thinking? So in case of g5, no, that's that's probably yeah, well knight h7. I mean it might be playable as it, as odd as it sounds, it might be playable. So the g5 pawn is targeted, and with h5, g5 being included, perhaps black, it'll be kind of easier for black to castle, to castle short than at least uh, having, you know, uh, some files closed. So it won't save black uh, from, you know, from white's attack, because bishop e2 and then sacrifice on h5 will be an issue, but at the very least, some stability on the king's side in this case. I'm just not sure if white's supposed to go g5 because capture on h5 might be valid as well. So I'd probably try to swap the rooks with black. And yeah, I mean, that, that, that's once again, that, that's very uncharacteristic for the Grunfall because black has... A, uh, hasn't applied enough pressure just yet, and not having the e pawn is like very, very inconvenient, so to speak. But maybe it is playable, right? So d4 pawns hanging after d5, bishop goes to c8 once again. No, it's white, white has to be better in this case. Nepo decided to take on g4. Yes, bishop g4 is played. Uh, well, c5, if not uh, to take on g4, maybe c5. Yeah, well, c5 is kind of always the, always the consideration, right? But I don't really think it helps us in this line. c5, d5, now we are probably taking, right? But still, let's say white acts precisely the same as he was in previous lines. So f3, bishop goes, bishop e3. I don't think the inclusion of uh, c5, d5 helps black to generate more counterplay. Once again, compared to the normal Grunfeld, we don't have we don't have the pawn on E file to go E6 to undermine the D pawn, right? So it's simply not there. So Bishop takes G4 played. Bishop takes G4 played. Played and f2, f3, indeed. 
So it will be this setup with f3, bishop e3, queen to d2, and castling long. And people say that's the spirit called the bluff. I don't think it's a bluff. From how it looks, it does seem to be a playable position for white, at least for one game, right? At least for one game. There could be an idea to put the bishop on h5, but perhaps not, not in this version. Sometimes you would actually put the bishop on h5 and it stops white's uh, kingside intentions and, and kind of makes it awkward, like attacking the f3 pawn and also pinning it. So some knight e4 might become an issue later on, but in this case, I'm afraid knight h3, knight going to f4 will be really, really unpleasant for black to face. So what has happened, in fact, after f3, bishop did not go to c8, but stopped on e6. Can black play castle long at some point? It'll be, it'll be really tough to achieve. It'll be really tough to achieve, even though, now that you've mentioned it, after bishop e3, I do think you start by going c6, not castling short just yet. So you go c6, and maybe you want to play knight d7, queen e7, for instance, and castle long. Not that it kind of guarantees you safety, Say knight e2, maybe white also doesn't have to rush with the castle. The queen e7, some knight f4, possibly. Castle long, I mean, castle long doesn't feel completely safe as well. But yeah, but perhaps an improvement on a short castle idea. Yeah, could be. But first and foremost, does white want to play d5 or not? Because that, that's one of the moves I'd be looking at. Just play d5, play... I mean, you've already started the game in a very, very aggressive fashion, right? So just push it forward. d5. In this case, I suspect no sacrifices, right? So bishop has to go to c8. And you continue pushing. You go e5. Mm, I don't think knight goes to g8. In case of knight d7, white seemingly safely plays f3, f4, then continues developing. In this case, I'm sure white has at least a sufficient compensation for the pawn. So I suspect e5, knight h5 is a critical line because white, in this case, has to reckon with knight g3. So for instance, f4, which would have been my move of choice in a, which was my move of choice in the previous line, now kind of runs into knight g3. Rook moves, knight f1, and you have to take with the king, which is which is awkward, right? King, if that, that, that doesn't seem to be like a good position for white. So after knight h5, white will have to find something else. And maybe there is no, no, no convenient reply after knight h5. Then it means e5 is not a great idea, then it means maybe d5 shouldn't be played. Uh, bishop g5 makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, over here. E yes, perhaps. But then we have to understand how to react to h6, because provoking black to play g5 is not such a... I mean, from black's perspective, doesn't seem to be like a really terrifying prospect to play g6, g5 since we've established that black is actually not forced to castle short, maybe including h6, g5 is not necessarily a bad thing. Because you're controlling f4, maybe one day the knight's going to get there. Uh, right, and, and uh, there have been some remarks in the chat uh, about sacrificing the rook on h5. I thought so, but then apart from e5 being hanging, there is also a threat of queen h4, and that makes it awkward, right? Because, yeah, f4, and I'm missing kind of one, one move. If knight f3 would have been on the board, white would be more or less happy, but, but queen h4 is really annoying. And then you're probably just lost. And there is no other way to guard the e5 pawn, because queen d4 runs into knight c6. Yeah, it runs into knight c6, and you can't take, you, you, you'll have to play bishop b5, black castles, 
And yeah, oh, why, did, why did you basically why did you sacrifice an exchange if you if you're the one who is being attacked? Bishop c6, b6, already bishop takes e5 is a threat. Yeah, that's that's just unacceptable for white. Uh, check on e4 instead of ah uh, yeah that could make some sense. Wait a second. So we sacrifice on h5, we give a check from a4, and then we go to e4. But again, it does seem to be too slow. Does seem to be too slow. Now, I don't think uh, it's such an all-in situation for Maxim Vashialograph. I don't think he's, he's going to go for it like d5e.
Uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, apologies for the sound issues, and hopefully we have something, or rather someone, to make up for it. So please welcome a guest in our studio, one of the participants of Jerusalem Grand Prix at the mm. same time. Well, uh, was knocked out in the second round. Yes. Sergei Karyakin. Yeah. Nice to, nice to see you, Sergei. And, yeah, can you tell us a few things about how your Jerusalem participation was? Because there, there was this mysterious game, you know, <laughs> eight moves, and then I was actually criticizing you quite a bit for, like, not playing the, the position later on. But, of course, I don't know what was happening or how tired you were after the, after the Armageddon. Uh, yeah, of course, I was, uh, I was tired after the match, uh, the difficult match against Metal Hare Krishna because we went through the... Armageddon uh, game and uh, I was tired and, and also uh, if we uh, if we look at my game I don't know if, if we can make moves here uh, uh, we can uh, make moves we will uh, get the analysis just. board on the screen we will pretend it's not <laughs> the game between Navarra and Wei it's our game uh, yeah well uh, we need the digital board guys yeah it, it was uh, in the opening it was the idea of of Anish Giri who played this at f 3d3 few times against uh, Jan Nepomniče, and he told me this is a nice idea, but uh, uh, the, the point was that uh, I, I didn't get it, but, but the problem was that in the first round, my opponent, V.E., he played against uh, Giri, and, and he obviously prepared this line, and I, I underestimated this, and uh, here he knew the good move G5, which I also knew, but I was hoping that... The, that Nobody really anal analyzed this line, and okay, it was. I believe it was uh, good for him in a few moves, and I for to draw. Uh, so okay, uh, it, it wasn't that I played for a draw, but it just happened. And uh, then later on, when we played tiebreak, I, I already went for the principal lines. E5, C5, we played, and uh, the first game I, I won, and the second game uh, with White I was much better, much, much better, and then I lost, it was a, uh, uh, basically deciding game of the match, and uh, well, okay, uh, yeah. but, but it's an, another story. And wait a second, yeah, I've, I've recalled the, the, this stupid uh, central opening, yeah, that was, that <laughs> was the crazy game, when he could have like king on c3 in 15 moves. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Okay, but yes, let's not forget, uh, Sergei today is not only a celebrity, not only the one of the participants, but he is my co-host today. So we'll be looking at the actual games of the semi-finals. Yeah. Correct? Uh, right, and then I'll require your encyclopedic uh, opening knowledge to help me out through, through this, basically, <laughs> because I have no idea what it's all about. Uh, uh, up uh, to this point... Well, okay. Some people know what's what's going on, right? Well, 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 it's very funny. I I wanted to discuss with you that the both players, Vashier and Nepomniš, they 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 basically have the same <laughs> repertoire with white and with black. So with black, they both play neither, and they both play Greenfield. Yeah. Uh, and with white, the main move is e4 for both of them. And but I find it interesting that both went d4 in a way. So kind yeah. of uh, <laughs> saying that yes, there might be problems in Grunfeld, and neither there are no problems, <laughs> no problems whatsoever. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, h4 was played, I believe, by Topalov against Vashier, and it was some yeah something like d c5 and b5. I think it ah, was no, 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 not against Vashier, maybe against Giri. Against yeah, Giri. it was yes. against Giri was in against Moscow Giri. candidates, and then it was Grishuk Vashier in Riga Grand yes. Prix. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, like this, they transposed to the uh, nice 3 d 5 h 4 line. And okay, uh, th this is. Ah, so this is known? Uh, well, it, it should be some. Uh, some uh, uh, some some lines they both looked at, and I don't know. Now it it really depends on of the deep preparation who prepared better. Mm -hmm. uh, bishop g5 h6 and bishop went to e3. Interestingly, yeah, uh, and so he is preparing for queen d2, and the pawn will be hanging sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was already played c6. Knight two, now g two and mm, bishop to c four. That's the that's the current situation. It's really hard to uh, evaluate 
But at the same point, I believe like Black has an extra pound. And, well, and what White has is not clear. I mean, he has the center, but that, that's usually what you have in Groomfield <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right? Yes, yes, yes. So Black might be fine, but of course the position is crazy. Yeah, now, now I think we've uh, lost the access to the other game. Do we remember the other game? Possibly. Uh, it was Grunfeld again with, with Queen B3 and A6, C5. Yeah, so over here, uh, Bishop C4, White to move. So White perhaps will go for Castle Long, right? Queen D2 uh, looks this way or another, very logical. Like Queen D2. And I'm not sure if you will defend. Uh, maybe bar. one of the ways is like you, you no, play some developing move. D, D7 or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because if White takes the pawn, he will lose the uh, initiative. Like, yeah, like and he even doesn't have uh, the next move. Like, ah, maybe I'm not even taking. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm playing Queen, queen E7. E7 yeah, and then want to castle long. And yeah, the bishop is getting stuck. Mm. So probably that's not a good idea for White. Yeah, so he might play some castle. I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure what was the point of knight e2, why he didn't play queen d2 immediately. Yeah, knight e2 oh. is somewhat mysterious, right? What, what was wrong with queen d2? And I was also looking at this d5, which is perhaps the most straightforward. So, so then yes. bishop probably goes to c8 and c6 the next move, yeah? Because mm. this doesn't seem to work, yes? Knight h5 and then knight g3 is... Uh, knight g3 is coming, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so bishop e3, oh wait, bishop g5 first, yeah, bishop g5, h6, bishop e3, logical, c6, and yes, and that's a big question, why not queen d2 first? Okay, maybe he will still have play d7 and there is no d5. Ignore, ignore the capture and there is no d5 it seems, because we Cause just... Takes and bishop f5, yeah. We take, yeah, and go bishop f5. Yeah, it's strange because as long as Black doesn't castle, his king is absolutely safe. Maybe, maybe better than the, you know, better than White's king in mm -hmm. some way. So on knight e2, he wanted to prepare knight f4, but bishop c4. Bishop c4, perfect timing. Yeah, otherwise knight f4 would have happened. Uh, okay, so the other version, maybe we do but, this. Oh. Well, or I started to think maybe you to play some queen a4 to attack the. To, you should to attack the bishop. Oh, well, actually, that's a, at least a move with the tempo. Maybe black goes b5, though. Yeah, and then queen c2. And, and then queen c2. So we provoked b5, we are play, uh, preparing castle long, and maybe, uh, maybe we'll clarify this bishop's uh, intentions with b3, if needed, again, I don't know. Yeah, it's like b5 is double h. It's not clear mm. if it's good for black. Right? Yeah, yeah, not clear. Plus 1.4, the chat says. <laughs> Plus 1.4 in, yeah, it was in immediate queen c2, interestingly. Queen c2, castle long. Yeah, could be. But I like your queen a4 idea, in fact. Queen a4, right. yes, just to ask what is. Yeah, what's because happening? Because he doesn't have knight on d7 to play knight b6. So mm, he should do yeah. something. Yeah, it's like playing bishop a6. Yeah, but again, the bishop not, not is clear. Then, and yeah, and, and we have a tempo to castle. Right, so it might be that uh, Vashiev will actually get some chances in this game. Interesting. Maybe. Queen c2 instead of queen d2. Yes, we already picked it up. Mm. Yeah, okay, we, we can take a look at queen c2. So, like, what's next? 97 castle and... And then knight f4, probably next move, and e5, mm -hmm. is the idea. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. So knight d7, uh, castles... Ah, wait, the, could it be... No, castle, yeah. Castle is correct. Uh, in this case, maybe black puts the queen here. Yeah, or e7 still. Which one you well, like better? Well, I, would, I prefer queen a5, actually. Queen a5, so at but least some threats, right? But still, but maybe probably still not the four, four should, right? Should this. Because this runs into this. Uh, but Lo maybe like queen a3 and queen ah, wait, b3. Queen a3, queen, queen a3, queen b2. Queen b3. Queen b3. Okay, it's still a huge compensation. But 
Um, yeah, like even some yeah. some E5 here, but queens are coming off. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's mm. not uh, not entirely clear. Yeah, okay. Then then B3 is not a great move. Um, but maybe E5. Yeah, e, there is a feeling like White has tremendous compensation. Yes, yes, yes. Even if you take and play Bishop C4, okay, e, maybe yeah. it's not the best, but just to show take that. and then some some E5. Yeah, and yes. everything starts hanging like F7, G6. It can be dangerous for black, let's say, especially from practical standpoint, the game when you're more or less any time agree a draw. I mean, if, if you're asked for a draw and then all of a sudden you have, uh, you have the position, it's absolutely clear that this game will go on. And yeah, basically white, white, white will never stop trying to push, right? Okay, so after queen a5, white goes knight f4. Probably it's clever to take on f1 then. Yeah. One of the rooks. Okay, ro ro rook h probably. Yeah, yeah, probably rook h takes. It's interesting that it might depend, uh, I mean, which rook you take, uh, black's reaction might depend on, because <laughs> now with rook h to f1, maybe I can allow myself to castle short. Maybe this oh. is... Okay, uh, uh, and then rook h1. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, and then, then you return to h1. Yeah, so the point was, like, if I'm castling long, that was the initial intention, right? That's why we went knight d7 and moved the queen. Then e5 is kind of awkward, right? Yeah, and black and has to what, go back. Uh, to, to e8 or g8, and this is like... I mean, maybe not the end of the world, but... It's not very attractive. It's clear white has some compensation and or maybe a serious compensation. White probably has e6. I mean, maybe immediate e6. Yeah, e6. Yeah. G8. I, I don't even know where this go. Where, where this one goes. Does, to e8. Doesn't yeah. matter. Ah, still e6. e6 yeah. Yeah. Still e6. Yeah, it's, it's really awkward. I mean, it's really awkward. You can't take. You lose the exchange. You can't move the knight because at the very least e f7. Yeah, so it actually does look kind of bad for black. So if I'm castling short instead, at least after e5 I can go to d5. I'm not sure if it's a good position for black, but at the very least I can do that. Yeah, that's, that's why actually I was not joking with uh, 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 to play rook h1. <laughs> but just to play rook h1, the other rook to g1, yeah. And then maybe e5 at the, uh, uh, at the right moment. Yeah, e5, sacrifice on g6 and checkmate. <laughs> This is how it's done, yeah. Yeah, so we probably showed how dangerous the black position is, and... Mm -hmm. Maxim is still Maxim thinking. Maxim is still thinking. Over here... Mm, the I'm not sure of what alternatives he actually has, because... I mean, one can say, okay, we can play knight f4, take with the king, something, but... Yeah, but queen c2, castle long seems natural. Yeah, uh, to castle long, okay. Uh, queen c2 is probably better than queen d2, which was our first intention, but mm -hmm. uh, the most important is to castle, yeah. Yeah, and, and okay, and there is still a question if you want queen a4 kind of include, because queen a4, I believe black has to play b5, yeah. Probably. And queen a4, black probably uh, plays b5, we go back, and it's not clear who benefits from this b7, well, b5, because it might, might be a weakness later on. Maybe he will start some knight a6 with the idea and before. Oh, knight before. Oh, well, actually, um, maybe he does that as well after an immediate queen c2. Can he play knight a6? He can. Okay. It's, it's probably... It's kind of, I don't know, threatening knight before. It's probably anyway. castle. Just castle. Knight Just before, castle. Knight Doesn't before matter, queen yeah. b1. Knight before we go to b1. I don't, I don't know what's next. Yeah, still knight f4, e5 is pretty much there. Yes, and a3 also in the right moment. Yeah, so we play a3, even if black goes a5, uh, at some okay, point the, we, the, we, the, we the will take. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, let's say, what's uh, black's to move? Yes, yeah, so a queen e7, let's say a3, he goes a5, and maybe it's like not very attractive mm. to take on b4 immediately. Not immediately, but knight f4. Knight f4, say. yeah, trade, and, and then, yeah, it's always... I mean, it's always a threat, so at some point the knight will have to go back to a6. Mm. Yeah, so the opening trick kind of works out for Bush Yellow Graph. Mm, and it's, it's really tough for Jan then. It's really tough for Jan. Oh, well, he, it's still, uh, so since he won yesterday, a lot of people were uh, 
kind of congratulating him and, and everything. But no, all, but it's too early to congratulate. Yeah, it's like MVL is a very strong player. That's a knockout mm. tournament. You consider it to be like one of the specialists in knockout. It's like it's not easy to come back, but we've seen like people winning on demand with, with black pieces. And yeah, now yeah. MBL has, uh, has the white pieces. Uh. Even in, in my match, which I lost in the end, uh, w once I came back after losing the first game with black, then I won with white. So uh, it, it happens, yeah. No, it happens. It absolutely can happen. And wait a second, was it the same scenario in the final of um, Riga Grand Prix? Where and we all lost game one, I'm guessing, right? Against? Against Mohamed Yarov. He lost game one and then he won game two uh, in uh, Joko Piano. I remember Mohamed Yarov struggling to equalize uh, in Joko yes, Piano. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I remember his name. So MVL does know uh, what it takes to come back. Queen C2 played. And yeah, and I was uh, promising to look at the other game, but I don't know what happened to the to the actual board. I don't know how to do it now. Yeah, can we have a camera shot on Navarra and VE? Because that's a, that's a very interesting position. We went for the line that we, we were discussing with Sergei before coming on air. That seems to be like uh, one, of the, uh, one of the theoretical lines. Uh, let's see if it will now. I can't bring it on air. Yeah, so basically the same Russian system in the Grunfeld with Queen B3. Uh, then when it came to this position where Maxim Vashilograf yesterday played knight c6 against Jan Nipomnishi, Black's choice was to go a 7 a6. One of the very long theoretical lines. And, and actually Novara is still playing pretty quickly. I'm wondering what's, what's happening there. So basically Black went for the line where he sacrifices a piece and... Uh, I don't know. Looks like has enough compensation, but again, it's like human intuition is nothing in the in this kind of positions where everything seems to be analyzed by by computers. Let's see if we can get it on the screen. Just a second. Ah, well, it's VE who has 1 hour 32. Yeah, yeah. Now, if we look, so, so everything prepared. He's prepared. Everything is prepared. Okay. Yeah, and similarly, we got it on the, on the analysis board. So, what, what? here, a7, a6, hmm? bishop e2, b5, queen b3, c5. That's... Yeah, it's a very well known, and uh, most of the players played bishop e6 here. And ah, is yeah, this is the this is the theory. I was wondering yeah. how how did they get to this position? Yeah, bishop e6, queen c2, knight uh, d7, bishop, bishop c3, uh, rook c8, uh, rook d1, b4, knight d5, bishop d5 takes takes knight c5 castle and okay, this is how you get this games. position, right? Yeah. And and here it's like sometimes theory goes to end game. White is trying to prove some minimal minimal advantage. If black knows everything, then yeah, actually, I played a game against Peter Swidler here, and I was uh, I was winning at some point. So uh, the position is quite critical. Yeah, it's it's still very tricky for Black. He has to know literally everything. So knight B D seven, and people in the chat say it has to be E five, right? Well, the there are some some games and some theory. Yeah, so e5, well, according to people in the chat, who is like the strongest chess player, you know, <laughs> everyone ex equipped with the engine. e5 was the critical. Bishop e3, though, seems to be a very, very interesting line. Uh, knight goes to g4, c6. Knight e3, critical. d takes c7, white wins a piece this way, or rather, should we say, black sacrifices the piece this way. Queen takes on g7, of course. Take the knight, black goes queen h3 check, black goes bishop e6. Yeah, white is probably not forced to play knight g5, but it's, it's very logical. Yeah, way. otherwise, uh, the feeling, okay, what, what else can we do? Like play queen yeah. d1 or queen c2, right? But then rook might go to c8 and b yeah, the b4. The feeling is like even some positional play like this, right? As long as the, I mean, white, white king is awkward. 
It can be some, some compensation. Yeah, it's, it's a huge compensation. So bishop b6, knight g5 is principled in a way. White is trying to take the bishop. So queen h4, knight e6, f e6. Now f2 is hanging. Yeah, what has to take on e6 probably? Probably has to take on e6, yeah. King h8. King h8, I Ro suspect, and then what? Rook, Rook f1. f1. Yeah. And it's important to take on e6, otherwise it would be funny checkmate. <laughs> yeah, and some move like rook f4 can play play with the idea queen g5. Ah, rook f4 actually threatens queen g5, yes. So what we do? h3, but then bishop d4. Yeah, bishop d4 is good. <laughs> Knight d1 and queen <laughs> g3 <laughs> checkmate. Uh, uh, um, rook h2, why is... Uh, uh, yeah, actually, was yeah, the knight d1 chance. was kind of cooperative. <laughs> Ah, wait, but what if we, sw uh, if we change the moves order? If we first go bishop d4... Yeah, but then queen g4. Ah, you mean... No, no wait, rook of two, queen we h4. take queen <laughs> h4. Ah, it doesn't really work. Rook e2, and you still have rook f2. Yeah, yeah it doesn't work. Queen g4, and bishop f2, king g2 is nothing, yes. This is nothing. I mean, that's not dangerous. So we kind of have to go rook f4 first to cover g4 square. h3, bishop goes to d4, rook h2. Yeah, bishop d4 wasn't forced. It the, was interesting, yes. but maybe queen g5. To ah, queen g5 consider. check anyway, but, yes. But bishop g4. It's now bishop g4, h5 attacks yeah, the bishop, but, but you don't <laughs> want to take it. <laughs> Maybe you not don't want to take, yeah. Mm, some 95, yeah, and mm -hmm. it's not clear if, if it's good or not. So probably h5 is not the move. Yeah, that, that's mm. very interesting because we seemingly knows what he's supposed to do. Uh, we have this position on the board, rook f1 played. Wait a second. Ah, uh, no. Rook f4 was very logical, but h3 is, is a good move. Mm. Can black do something else? Not really. Wait, if I play... Just h5, yeah? It's, it's weird, but at least I know what to do after h3, right? I'll, I'll give yeah, a check and... Ah, maybe, still, <laughs> maybe still same thing, bishop g4, right? Because this looks, this looks nice for black. No, it's bishop ah, probably, probably just winning, yeah, yeah. 4 rook f4. Uh, so queen g5, bishop g4, yeah. and... Yeah, probably still bishop g4. But it's, it's a better version for black. Yeah, also. that's a better version for black. One of the things to do maybe is just to put the bishop to, I don't know, where, maybe, maybe take. Like takes on c3, takes on g4. What's the material here? It's equal, right? Uh, no, no, it's white, white, white spawn. White will have a pawn, but... But it still looks quite decent for black. Rook f4 and stuff. Might be some draw. I don't know. Maybe first king g2 and then f3. King g2, rook f4, f3. That's <laughs> actually still a pawn, right? Still a pawn. Maybe white is still kind of trying for something, but not much. H5 was, was an interesting yeah, idea. But, uh, what I'm thinking that Normally, if this is well analyzed and if it's possible uh, to get, it has to be a draw in the e end. Evgeny, so. e is there a rook f5 move? <laughs> wow, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> so we actually want to play rook g5, yes? <laughs> so uh, um, again, what has to play h3? Ah, white, white always does this. <laughs> and b ah, bishop d4, rook h2 again. Ah, so there is rook f5, but uh, it kind of doesn't help because rook, rook check, it's always, uh, it's always rook. Ah, maybe this rook e5, is... Rook e5, but yeah, but then qu queen d7. Move. It's interesting, but not clear what... So the point of rook e5 is that if, if the queen goes away, then rook g5 and we can take on g4. We can take the bishop on g4. So rook e5, let's say queen d7... Keeping control. Ah, yeah, and there is no, obviously there is no queen g4 because yeah. of this. Uh, white has to keep control over g4, so it goes to d7. And there might be, once again, I mean, knowing that this is a computer analysis, it might be that some, some e6 is the move here. You know? And next is rook d8. And, 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 and yeah, uh, you basically you have a thre an idea of rook d8, and you also have an idea of rook g5. 
Well, from positional standpoint, e6 is not bad because it also covers the d5 square, so no knight d5. We'll see. We'll see. It's, it's actually a very, very intriguing position. I'm wondering if, if the chat knows what's, what's the recipe. h3, rook h2 only moves. Yes. Uh, rook f5 was suggested in the chat. That's cool. I didn't see, but... Yeah, but that, uh, that, that's is, cool. That's the move is really nice. <laughs> the move is really nice, and, and I sort of like it better than rook f4, because that's, rook f4 is like your typical solution, right? I mean, you play the blitz, you have uh, two seconds to make a move, it, it's rook f4, it's, it's mm -hmm. so common. It's like that's the square for the rook. But then somehow you're getting stuck at some point. Rook h2, you can also play bishop d4, and... Mm. By that point, white is not even forced to go knight f1, and probably will not because e4 is hanging. King h1. Yeah, like king h1. Ah no, but wait, couldn't black play after rook h2? Just uh, rook takes. Uh, sorry, bishop takes c3 and bishop ah, e4. Ah yes, and that, that's that's correct. Yes. That's correct. Uh, so so that's that's one more idea. Uh, uh, yeah, first black has to play rook f8 because otherwise the rook will be hanging. Yeah, so if you do this immediately, there is Could some queen, queen c6 uh, or d5, yeah. and the rook on a8 is hanging. But after rook a f8, rook h2 actually runs into this. Ah, so that's another, that's another thing. Yeah, and how to defend? There is no move. Ah, so maybe we are talking this position. Mm. Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes e2. Two. Maybe queen takes a6 and then queen b5. Yeah, queen a6, queen b5, but do we seriously believe that this is... No, that, that has to well, be absolutely fine for black. Even yeah, well, black is clearly fine, but probably what, white is... White what, is also what fine, will make yeah. a draw, draw, queen, queen e5. Five and queen e5 is drawish. Ah, so it could be, like, uh, in fact, like a very straightforward, <laughs> very straightforward uh, drawish line, which I will not be surprised with, to be honest, because that's... Mm, that's typically how those sharp lines uh, look. Rook f5 is clearly better for white, people say. So rook f4, yeah, perhaps rook f4, h3, rook f4. Yeah, this, this line was provided. It's an engine line. Yeah, so people say, oh, you see, we are not uh, that weak. Mm -hmm. We are obviously weak compared to the engine, uh, to the chess programs, but we are not that weak. So finally managed to work out <laughs> this line, yeah, which turns out suggested by the engine and I suspect is just a draw. Finally, after the tournament, I can say that I'm in a good form. <laughs> yeah. got, got into good form. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, what's the next tournament? Wike? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm playing uh, World Blitz and ah, Rapid. Yeah, Rapid and Blitz, precisely. Yeah, sure. yeah. So there will be... Uh, World Rapid and Blitz Championship held in Moscow in, uh, in about a week. E, e, in one week, yeah. Yeah, about a week. So Sergey will take part there. Uh, I'll take part there uh, as one of the commentators. So we will both participate. And shall we go back to Vashiallograph and Nipomnishi? Because um, both games are very interesting today. But let's agree the game between Maxim and Jan has uh, much more let's say, impact on qualification, much more at stake, so to speak. Ah, and people say Lila claims Rook F5 winning. Guys, are you trolling in the chat or, or is it serious? <laughs> because if it's, if, it, if it's really true, that'd be, that'd be awesome. I think uh, that in this position it doesn't really matter if it's Lila or Stockfish because you can calculate it. Uh, yeah, it's like it's like a very forcing position. Yeah, yeah. that's actually may maybe you have something to explain. I mean, why people started it using the basically the uh, neural network, all those like mm. Lila, Alpha Zero, and so on, because it's not a typical not a typical engine, right? It's something else. It's the thing, sometimes yeah. suggesting <laughs> the moves that we don't understand and compute, computer usual computer uh, yes. problems do do not understand. Yeah, yeah. it's different. Actually, after rook f5, can white play f4? Or it turns to something? Mm, not sure, right? f4. So the check does nothing. King goes to g2. Uh, what do we do? It's yeah, a good question. Black can take, but then uh, takes and king g2 and 
руки флайна з камінь. This is like no, this is first of all it's low and uh, and there is no threat as well, right? Queen H3 we can take just, we can take the rook. Mm -hmm. or, or or we actually can we actually take the rook because bishop d4 and gf5 Ah, so this now if he takes the rook it's check rook f2 gf5. <laughs> And if bishop of one, queen of three, is pro I have resources. Oh yes, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean, that, that's a funny position. And then, of course, that's one of those positions when the engine will make an absolute clown out of you. I mean, no matter what you do, it will show. Yeah, you miss this, and then the other move, and so on. But yeah, but knight e4 seemingly holds because yeah, because knight g5 and stuff. Black. I don't know what black is supposed to. No, no, this probably just doesn't probably does, doesn't work for black. Yeah. So then f4 might be a move. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe, maybe the, then you take. No, I'm sorry, Evgeny. Mm -hmm. uh, just to finish the line after knight e4, rook g8. Uh, rook g8. I thought knight g5, g5, queen h4. Queen h4. And king, king g2 and <laughs> king h3. Wow. <laughs> but it's too much. Uh, yeah, we probably that's... like made five mistakes already. So. <laughs> But the, but the line was fine. The line was funny, yeah. But, but after g5, I think I, need, I found some another move like bishop of one, just... Yeah, maybe, maybe there is something boring as well, yeah. But good, yeah, yeah. boring but good. <laughs> bishop f1, because rook g8, we take on g8 with a check, yeah. Okay, so people provide lines in the chat. That, that, that's quite interesting, yeah. So rook f5, h3, rook e5, but this one we were able to figure out. So now we are not sure what happens after rook f5, f4. Because this felt like an interesting try at least. Queen d7 and computer line, I'm, I'm checking the chat. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's crazy. Like b4 line. and... But that's playable and black has uh, what it's called long-lasting initiative. And but, uh, but actually, I'm, I'm not so impressed with the line. Uh, I mean, with black. Knight b4, knight b1, rook a4, bishop g4. And, well, for the human, white is piece up and, uh, like... Uh, yeah, it looks like typical computer stuff. When computer doesn't see the clear compensation, starts trying to win the material back, <laughs> but not enough material, right? Yes, yes. So maybe, maybe it wins enough, we don't know. Well, actually, I, th I think that rook f4 is much more human way to play than... Uh, than rook, rook f5, f5 is nice, but it's not clear. Rook f4, but then, then we will probably have this, almost by force, this h3, rook f8, rook h2, right? Yeah. So let's go back to MVL and Nepomnishi. What happened was queen c2, queen uh -huh. to a5 immediately, and knight to f4 immediately. Oh, he played this knight. Bishop f1 and king f1. So he wants king on f1 rather than castled long. Um. Knight a6, a3, knight to c7, and people were saying bishop d2 is plus 243 for MVL. Looks like a joke. <laughs> Why is it so much better? Yeah, it's, it, it's not easy to understand. Like, it's uh, what? It's pawn up for black still. I do understand that there will be some problems with the queen, perhaps? No, I don't, I don't think so. Maybe it was Actually, bishop d2 after queen a5 instead of knight f4? Ah, maybe, maybe, it was, maybe it was something else, yeah, because uh, now in the current position... Bishop d2 is just queen a6, I, I, I don't see the yeah. point. Or even, or even queen b6 as well, because knight mm -hmm. a4 runs into queen a6 with a check or even takes on d4. So after knight c7... Black actually kind of prepared to castle long now. So it has to be something uh, very mm. active for white immediately, it seems. Honestly speaking, I, I don't like this knight f4 and king f1 at all, uh, because he somehow lost the connection of the pieces and uh, the king is will never be safe. On, and yeah, it's like, uh, where do you want your king to be? After long castle, it's clear. You want to play king b1 and king is safe. Now it's like what? You put it to g2, there will be some queen g5 check. You put it to f2, I don't know, some sacrifices, knight g4. So it always runs into something. Not even sure what he's supposed to do. Yeah, and black is kind of ready to castle to castle alone, and maybe even some g5, g4 after that. 
It was for, it was probably um, really good to play Bishop D2 after Queen A5. More I look at this move, more I like it. It's after Queen A5. Uh, be, be, because he he was preparing Knight D5 and it's not clear w which move. Or maybe play. still put the Queen uh, to A6. Uh, maybe yes. that's the idea. Uh, and you know what? Ah, and then I go E5. I don't know why it was like ah. <laughs> maybe this uh, was not needed, but at least uh, the tactical point that I thought of was that we trade here and after C takes we have B3 and Queen C8. So that's a big problem for black. So basically he doesn't have knight D5 after E5. Yeah. yeah that's maybe, I mean, maybe some like intermediate moves like Bishop D3, but then again. The feeling is like there should be something for white. Uh, EF6 doesn't work just yet. Probably not yet, but Queen B3. B3, Bishop C4. I'm trying to make <laughs> a draw with black. This and some Knight F4. Ah, and maybe Knight F4 here. Ah, and this is how we win. Now Bishop B3, Bishop takes A6, Knight A6, right? And EF6, and then A B3, and we, White is up a piece. I mean, like maybe. Win was a bit of overstatement because it's still three pawns for the piece, but white should be better here. Okay, this is uh, probably the first line we looked and we can even try to improve. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked really very, very good for white. So probably yeah. this bishop d2 was really a strong move. Uh, from how it looks now, after knight c7, king f1 to f2 was played by MVL. Well, actually, actually a good, s s solid move, I would say, because he's waiting for the castle to play before later on. And yeah, so he'll probably try to play b4 and, and chase the queen. Uh, yeah, so now for black. Is Pro he castling or he, he should immediately start, like, going g5 and try to... It's probably still interesting for white. Maybe even better for white. But... The position is getting more complicated now. Yeah, with king on f2, it's still your... You cannot be sure. And what's the, what's the time situation? I don't really see how much time players have. King f2, yeah, once again, we have provided with some variations. King f2, g5, knight goes back, white is better. Well, maybe white is just better. But again, then... White has to be better in whole Grunfeld defense because <laughs> he always has this center. Sometimes his king is safer and black doesn't have an extra pawn. Yeah, impressive. And that's a, that's a very interesting concept. Honestly, I don't have that much knowledge about the theory of this 4-H4 move. I'm well, not sure not if, like, if bishop g7... Normally is. black doesn't allow this. I mean, if you start with a normal move order, yeah, with knight c3, d5, h4, h4. Ah, you, you will not play bishop g7. Yeah, yeah, he will take on c4. Most ah, dc4 like is the move, yeah. Or c6 is the move. And ah, c6. So this was basically move. the line like Magnus tried against Grishuk, and there have been other games. So Grishuk tried against Magnus, I'm still. Well, well it's forgetting. probably more popular with knight f3, bishop g7, yes, than yes. h4. Knight f th this I was kind of showing, yes. Yeah. So, so after that, knight f3, bishop g7, h4, that was like tried many times. And mm. there are like solid lines after c6, there are cr crazy sharp lines starting with. C5, C5, or or, or B, C5, D5, B5, yeah. yeah, something like that. So all that is, is possible and you have to know tons of theory to play it. So that's relatively unexplored territory after this E4 pawn sacrifice and at least in the, in the current game it kind of works for white nicely. Uh, how do we estimate MVL's chances to beat Nepo? He has chances. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the answer. No, I mean, it's very hard. Like, how do you give percentage during the game? I mean, before the game, it was maybe 20% chance. Or, or what, what would you give after losing well, game one? Well, no, not 20, but like, I would say 33. <laughs> ah, really? Even after losing game uh, one? Uh, well, I, uh, I basically believe that... Uh, uh, that Maxim is a great player, so uh, he can lose sometimes, but he's also very dangerous with white. 
I played him many times. And, and also, if you look at the repertoire of, of Jan, his repertoire is not to play for a draw. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's a fair point. It's like uh, some people on Jan's, let's say on Jan's place, after winning game one, they would go for something like... <laughs> Yes. Imagine <laughs> Kramny going for his Queen's Gambit, right? <laughs> and then what do you do? Like, Grishuk was offering draw and move 10 against, <laughs> yes. against this, because you, you really, you, at some point, you run out of ideas. What can I do to actually pose a single problem? But yeah, but the Grunfeld or the Knight of if Maxim would go for e4, it's like not necessarily the opening which is solid. It's, it's, it's a good opening if properly played, but not, uh, um, not what you describe as solid. E, okay, so what do we have again? Um, this and king f2, that's the, that's the current situation. Jan is thinking, and Jan this year, now that I'm thinking of him, uh, there have been quite a few unstable performances from Jan, like two classical events of Grand Chestor, if you remember, right? So that he was leading the tournament and then, yes, and then was pushed back to 50%. Yes. It, it was the case in Croatia and then in August in Silfield Cup. He, he wasn't really leading, but at some point he got to plus and well, maybe well, he was. Well, yeah. he was leading because in Zagreb he started three out of three. Yeah, in Zagreb three out of three. In uh, Silfield Cup, and, uh, he, uh, as well, he was at plus two at some point. Yes, yeah, so it was Probably. at least a joint lead. Yeah. And then once again back to 50%. He won the event in Moscow, but mostly on tie breaks, I believe. So, yeah, somehow his classical chess wasn't... Well, he, he has shown a very good result in the beginning of the year, in the team, world well, team, right? But yeah, that, that was about it. Yeah, actually, I, I can say, like, uh, like his teammates, that he always plays very, very well for, uh, for the team. Uh, and he really shows some brilliant performances in Olympia, in World uh, Champion, uh, in World Team Championship, and European also. So he's good. He's good. He's good. But uh, once again, uh, not uh, the say rock solid player. So sometimes he allows. Well, he he does like to play chess himself, and and he allows the opponent to play chess. Yeah. Right. Now he has to make a move because uh, he. Uh, I understand what he's thinking. He doesn't want to play g5 knight e2, and the knight will go to f5. But maybe he should do it anyway. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, because well, what the other play? option is castle, right? Yes, but before nobody wants before to. Before is uh, is scary, and then queen e six, and even some queen b three, and then a four. Something the, starts the, the, right. The Rook d seven, a four, then b five, and somehow. Yeah, well, it's a, mm -hmm. black should try to get some play very quickly because otherwise. It's a weird situation where black has both castles possible mm -hmm. and none of them seem safe. If you castle short, mm, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe once again e5 if sacrifice on g6, maybe or, first or, or play or this. Rook g5, yeah. Rook g1 first and, and again, this king with g and h files being open doesn't look safe. I was thinking about some knight b5 move, but it's also... No, it, it runs to e5 now. It's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so the problem is <laughs> to find the move. Yeah, like uh, per usual. That's always the problem, yeah, to find it. Uh, maybe move the c uh, c7 knight so that... No, but we just went to c7, yeah? Yes. yes now yes. I'm already <laughs> thinking, like, let's move this knight again, so after b4 we can go to d8. But that, that was a... Uh, stupid joke about like wh when someone starts moving the pieces to initial squares, like he, he prepares for the for the next game. Yeah, <laughs> this one is already lost, and he's preparing for the next game. Yeah, it's hard to play for black. I agree. Actually, he played some move. Uh, uh, I, I he, don't see he did which. play g5. He did play g5. Okay, he played g5. Yeah. So now we suspect knight goes to e2, wants to go to g3 to f5. Maybe black should should just try to play it. G4. Just go g4. Yeah, G4, okay, we can... And then white probably doesn't react. Knight G3 is very logical, but maybe some... Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, probably Knight G3. 
Oh wait, do we want F4? That's that's also a question. Do we want F4? Or do we need F4? Yeah, do we need F4? Because Maybe we don't need it, because it's it's kind of... If it works, it should normally work without F4. And, and I mean, the idea of bringing the knight to F5, it, it does seem to be strong enough. So my only worry is if... You can knight F5, yes. Ah, knight F5, so we don't, we don't do this stupid w thing. We, we can make... Uh, okay, knight F5, bishop F8, I don't know what, what's next move. Knight F5, I, I was think. actually kind of worried about this. And to take on three, yeah? Takes and to try to take on e3. Because knight g7... I mean, it, it, it's weird... Uh, ah, wait. Well, actually, after knight g7, I can also go there. Yes. So both kings being like somewhere in the center. King e3 is forced and then queen g5, queen takes g7. It could be that black uh, king is just safer. And he's the pawn up as well. Um, all right, but we mm. were... Turns out we were unable to guess the moves. B4, MVL starts. Actually, with I, I was thinking about before after knight e2, g4, mm -hmm. which moment. is pro probably the same. Yes, but so this, but I, I don't know. Uh, wait, Evgeny, I mean, uh -huh. uh, probably he wants to play knight d3 after queen e6, or ah. why, why did he play before? Ah, you mean may maybe he has something else in mind? Yeah, queen a6 is strictly only. M mm, yes, perhaps. Oh, more or less. Yes. And knight d3 as an alternative could be, and heading to c5. But then queen kind of comes back, yes? Queen c4. And, yeah, and then if knight e5, queen. E well, actually, this looks like a move with the tempo, but in, in a way, this knight is like what stops white from attacking further. So the knight on f5 is probably better than on e5. Yeah, actually, that's why we wanted to play knight e2 and to, to move the knight. Mm -hmm. Maybe he will still go to e2, but then b4 kind of helps. Once again, black, black is very happy to go to c4, right? Yes. So I'm not sure if b4 was, like, the timing for b4 was perfect, because the move itself is, okay, not without an idea. It's, like, it's logical. Okay, uh, this line with queen c4, 95, queen, queen e6 looked... Very principal. So Decent maybe some six. knight a4 now. To c5. But he yeah. can just play queen e7 and knight e6. And yeah, somehow it's not easy to, not easy to get black in this case. And I think they, they went for this line. So knight was put to, the, uh, to d3, queen c4 played. And maybe Jan is kind of back in the game. Maybe he's back in the game. It looks like his position is much better than it was before. He, he can play some, like, Rook C1 move, and it's still very unclear, but... Rook A C1, I mean, but... Oh, yeah, Rook A C1. Oh, but wait a second. Can I start doing these things? Oh, then you go 95. Point obvi obviously being queen c3, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it's naive to expect white to blunder this, but still a nice variation to show. So g4, knight e5, no, uh, wait a second, yeah, knight e5, queen e6, and, and probably mm. then f4, or not f4. Yeah, black, oh, sorry, white obviously has compensation still, but... A4, a four, a four yeah, a four and, and some f5s. Yeah, it's it's still a game, but it's like uh, it feels that black is no longer without the chance, because at some point it was it was really, it was really bad. Uh, really looked really dangerous. It's just like you you might lose without even knowing what you are doing. Now at least at least the queen comes back from from the a5 square. Okay, and you know what? No move from way way still. <laughs> <laughs> No, no move from we. If we speak of the other semi-final after Rook F1, just just briefly uh, to update our knowledge about this position, Rook F1. Now we figured out. Yeah, once again, that's a game between Navarra and we. Uh, we figured out there is like two options: Rook F5 or Rook F4. Or at least two options we were looking at. 
Rook f4 pretty much forces the following line, h2, h3, rook goes to f8, rook h2, and then black has and probably should go for this. Take on e2, uh, I mean take on e4, take on e2, and this seemingly is equal. At least doesn't look like any side place for a, for a win. It's probably a draw. Yeah, it's probably just a draw. And yeah, and rook f5 is much more complex because even uh, with support of a chat who posts, you know, uh, the computer evaluations, there have been very different opinions depending on whose computer is deep enough, good enough. We have one guy in the chat who uses cloud engines and posts us, you know, in the middle game position he is sometimes would say depth 70, which you <laughs> normally you do not expect, right, from people in the chat. But yeah, and, and he proved to be correct on many, many occasions. Which is not very relevant when you think, okay, when I'm commentating, that's, that's the reason I'm, not, uh, I'm trying not to use any kind of engine, because players don't have it. Right? Because yeah. players don't have it. So trying to show, I mean, what players are thinking about. It's much more interesting when the commenters don't use the engine. Uh, yeah, okay, Sergey. And since we have you in a studio, I think I will try to ask you some questions that I was asked <laughs> by the chat mm -hmm. during the previous broadcasts. And, and I mean, it's just like accidentally one came to mind. Uh, I was asked, and it's a, it's a lot of discussion about Kramnik's variant of chess without castle. I mean, what do you think of it? I mean, it, it sounds strange, but, but you've heard of it, right? Uh, like yeah, sure. Well, I, I have nothing against it. And uh, basically, if I would start to play chess, like uh, if I would be the kid, uh, it, it would be probably much more interesting to start a, a new game without any theory and to, to try to go very deeply. But as, as far as I'm <laughs> already a professional chess player, uh, I'm, of course, very used to to our game and uh, it will be hard to change uh, to change it now uh, but uh, to try it for fun I have no, nothing against it and uh, I like to play very much fish r random chess and so I, I like to experiment sometimes yeah but it's interesting that uh, same with Fisher random let's say yeah but, but like all of a sudden all opening theory disappears it's interesting that it's been a lot of discussion on internet and typically Fisher Random is supported by, say, players of relatively my strength, like 2650 players, let's say, 2600 players, who think that the only difference between them and the top, very top grandmasters is the theory knowledge, which is not true, obviously. If you check, <laughs> if you check who is winning the <laughs> world championship in 1950, 960, it's still, yes. I mean, Fisher Random, it's still precisely the same names. Like the final was Wesley Saw Magnus Carlsen, right? <laughs> the semi final was Fabi Caruana and who else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it was uh, against Nepo and yeah, some other guys. Uh, so perhaps, yeah, it would still be the same game, but in the other, in, I mean, on, on the other note, it's like indeed the elite players, they put so many hours in knowing theory of this precise position out of this whole Fisher Rental <laughs> of the position we know as classical chess. So it will be a bit unfair to all of a sudden say, no, now the World Championship is played with a random starting position every single game. Yeah, it should probably go like both ways of, of chess. Uh, uh, it's impossible to finish the classical chess in one moment, but also if, if we look at them, Top, play, uh, top tournaments when we have a lot of short draws, sometimes... Uh, yeah, one thing, so let's, let's modify something so that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, that, as a commentator, I sometimes have a tough task explaining why this or that was a great draw. Even if I know that, yeah, there is no, no surprise. It, it's like, for instance, we think this rookie one Berlin line. <laughs> because basically, you see rookie one, you see a couple of right moves from black side, and it's yes. already about the time to agree a draw, because you know what, sa what happens. So for an amateur who tunes in to watch some grandmaster play, they think, okay, board full of pieces, queens on the board, everything, guys agree the draw, they don't want to fight. 
But we grandmasters know that what's coming, you have the e-file, everything will be swapped on the e-file and there is nothing to play for. Yeah. So, yes, maybe we will need to modify this game this way or another, the system of play or whatever. Well, actually, uh, for a few years I am very much supporting um, Rapid and Blitz Chess, uh, where, where the percentage of draws are much lower, especially the, the quick draws. So, uh, if you want more fighting chess with m more mistakes, of course you should um, concentrate on a Blitz. Yeah, but now uh, that, that brings me to the other point in discussion. And sorry, guys, that we go floating further and further away from the games, but not much is happening. Yeah, Rook F4 was played by Wei, so very likely we'll see this uh, variation when, it, yeah. when it's a draw. Uh, yeah, so more mistakes, you said. And now with online engines, with, uh, say, all the spectators watching chess on the Internet and having the, the engine running, now there is no more mystery in Grandmaster Moves, because anyone sitting at home with his stockfish can say, okay, that was good, that was good, and then now it's a, now it's a huge mistake. Like yesterday in Jan's game, at some point when he's completely winning, like dead winning, and people in the chat type, that was a huge mistake, he blundered, <laughs> because instead of having plus eight, now he only has plus four, <laughs> right? So still, maybe we should not concentrate on playing flawless chess and instead accept that mistakes will be happening and the player who makes least mistake or basically wins, the, the player who makes the mistake last loses and then we switch to rapid and blitz so it will be more, more exciting. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and also people should not forget that if they think they are so good, Sit and, sit and play. <laughs> yeah, that's precisely, that, that, that's the answer to all the trolls <laughs> on the internet. Like, like, yeah, Grandmasters are silly, they don't know, well, they, they can't play like my Stockfish does, but can you play better than the Grandmasters without a Stockfish? Yeah, that's, yeah. The, um, that's the question. Okay, so, um, sorry, but I didn't ask uh, if you have the time still. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's fine, or, or uh, you, you I, have to go I probably point. have something like 10 minutes and then, then I go to, to the Russian commentary. Um, okay, okay, so 10 minutes we have, uh, what, uh, uh, here, I don't want to call this one that the game has finished, but after seeing Rook F4 and H3 on the board. Uh, yeah, actually it's, it's difficult to find something else. Uh, uh, because Bishop D4... Yeah, Bishop uh, D4, uh, we Rook, already Rook H2. said. Rook we H2. didn't like... Mm, yeah, so... It's really hard. Okay, in some order, if we play Rook F8, Bishop D4, or Bishop D4, Rook F8, uh, what's the, what White is doing? We didn't like something here. We uh, said King H1, right? But King H1 runs oh, actually Black Bishop starts. C3. Uh, yeah, but it, it's kind of the same, right? White is not Well, losing. not exactly. Black will have queen e4 with a check and... Oh, uh, yeah. So what I'm trying to say, like, can Black try to play for a win? Once again, if he, let's say, if he starts with rook f8, White is, according to what we thought, has to play rook h2, and then instead of bishop c3, let's... Uh, let's say Black wants, wants a fight, if he goes bishop d4. Can White somehow... Maybe it's not such a big threat, on the other hand. Yes, I'm thinking about some Queen d5, like, just to ask the bishop. Ah, yes, yeah, so we attack the bishop. If bishop... Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good uh, illustration. So what we're afraid of with White is... Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, that Rook's going to take on f2. If the bishop yes. takes, it's yeah. not so much. Yeah, King h1. King h1, well, it's still... Uh, Bishop G3, but so, um, is this a problem then? Ah, no, no, this guy is hanging with a check. No. So I thought of some, some, oh no, wait, well, actually, Rook F2. Yeah, no, no, you just take, D4. yeah, you just take on D4 with a check. No, actually, Bishop F2 and Bishop G3. We, ah, Bishop we F2, might King consider. goes, Bishop, Bishop here. Maybe it's still playable, right? Because this rook on h2 is awkward. Okay, I'm not sure about queen, queen d5. Uh, so basically, that, that, that seems to be like the only try. Okay. So, 
What we were saying, ah, king h1, then at the very least, black has takes and takes on e4. Which might still not be terrible. Yes, yes, yes. You, you can take. Rook takes, we queen e6, take queen on e5. e6, rook e2, we take on b5. I thought queen e4, king g1. King g1. Rook e5 looks scary, but then just check and rook g2 probably. Five. Check from here, um, right? B8, B8 king g7, rook g2. It's a little he, bit he, awkward, but... He can play rook a2, but what is the wish? It's a little bit awkward for white, but should be able to defend normally. Should be able to defend. And yeah, and final, just a quick check in Fushiela Graf uh Because few more moves followed here after queen c4. Yeah, rook c1, what we thought. And uh, wait a second, yeah. A rook c1, knight to d7. Covering e5, uh, opening the bishop. Which forced knight b2, I don't know if forced, but that's kind what Maxim forced, played, yes. yeah? Yeah, you don't want to trade the queens, and you have to get rid of this queen on c Knight b2, queen e6, knight e2. Yeah, so, f so finally he, he come back to this plan with knight g3 and knight f5. But with losing some tempos. Yeah, and the knight, uh, the other knight is on b2 instead of c3, right? So, well, maybe d5 is one of the one of the also. ideas he has. Also. But still, Ooh. feeling is like black's position improved over last few moves. Yeah. It improved, but it's still it's still very complicated. And uh -huh. again, black has to find a move, like well. What to play? Mm, yeah, the position <laughs> improved, but still, yeah, but still, make a move. I'm yeah. thinking about a five, which looks completely crazy, but, <laughs> to, to but give out at the, the same time, yeah, it's like like for some reason you, you you want to get at least some square. So that that that's what is bad about your opponent having a center. So he literally controls all the all the squares on your territory. So you want at least like a square for one of the knights, and and you can't find it. All right, so I, once again, I have to thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a pleasure having you on air. I think, uh, yeah, always welcome. Thank you, Eugene. And good luck in forthcoming tournaments. And, yeah, see you mm -hmm. in the, uh, during World Rapid and Blitz and possibly as one of the winners joining us in the studio. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. And I'll be back with you guys in a few minutes.
Uh, welcome back, guys. We continue with the semi-finals game, second game of the semi-finals in Grand Prix Jerusalem. And please welcome another guest in the studio, already for a, well, already a second appearance of Grandmaster Ernesto in Kiev. Hello, Evgeny. Hello. Uh, yeah, and we, we will stay on air for another hour to see how those games developing, or should I say how this game develops, because... In the semi-final between Navarra and Wei, the variation that we looked at with Sergei Karyakin has happened, and now I no longer think that the position is that intriguing. Uh, I believe we left it somewhere around this point. Interestingly, Wei blitzed out like all the moves to King H8, and after Rook F1, only there he has started to spend time. Rook f4, h3, rook a, f8 looked very logical. Here we were looking at like bishop d4 being perhaps the only alternative, but was not clear what black actually threatens after bishop d4. Uh, so in a game, bishop c3 was played. Rook e4, queen takes, rook e2, queen b5, and maybe this last move makes a little bit of difference because we were looking at, the, at uh, rook takes a Two, but then queen e5 seems like an immediate draw. Because you can't go king g8 here, it's queen e6 or queen d5 and the rook is lost, right? Rook f6 looks like white can take on e7, right? Yeah, it's that means queen f6, queen straight it, draw agreed. Uh, right, instead black plays queen e4. So centralizes his own queen. Maybe still has some some threats like rook f5. Maybe it is still slightly awkward for white. I don't know to to what degree. Yes, yeah, uh, obviously white rook on h2 is uh, misplaced. Misplaced. And yes, and that, this, that's this a problematic is, piece. Yeah, this is the only reason why uh, black can continue because white king. Okay, uh, white king is weaker, but it's uh, hard to imagine. Uh, if it's not a huge blunder, mm, uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's. Uh, I think. I still think it's uh, not far from the from draw. Queen before or rook g two. Oh yeah, queen before and then queen d four. Right, rook g two, and even even a four doesn't lose on the spot because after rook f five you still have a check, or or check on b eight maybe like to have those squares covered, and then then rook g two. And it's really, even if black wins the pawn back, it has to be like a lot of stuff happening before uh, black gets realistic chances, right? Yes, but if you lose a pawn and don't uh, change the queens, then it can be practically unpleasant because he can play like, I don't know, 50 moves and uh, yeah. try and I mean, put some pressure. It's like queen before, but then we are already talking a position pawn down maybe. Uh, so queen b4 it is without a4. That's the move David Navarra has played. Now black can trade the queen's take on a2, but then white has little to worry about. Maybe f3 in this case. To bring the rook back. Now this is some, uh, just the position you don't lose. I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't think black has any chances. So if he wants to have chances, that means he has to try to keep the queens on the board, which yes, seems... Queen, queen f3, for example. It can, it can be some domination. Uh, maybe queen g... Uh, queen ah, g4. and then, then he'll take... Oh, no. no, the rook is handy. He ah, cannot, queen yeah, queen g4. Maybe queen g4 is important. Uh, yes, queen d3, queen d4, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if queen d... The moment queens are traded, then white probably is out of danger. Yes. So probably queen b4 is just, just uh, good enough. Yes, but what I said, this game is technically still on, but very likely a draw anytime soon. But in the other semi-final, even if the position will be simplified, <laughs> the game will still be going because Vashia Lograf needs to win at any cost. So I believe that's much more intriguing, in a way much more important semi-final because the winner of it gets very good chances. Well, well in case of Maxim Vashia Lograf wins the semi-final, he's behind right now, but if he wins, he's immediately qualified. If Jan Nipomnishi wins, he makes a giant step forward. He would still need to, to win the final though. 
but yeah, but knocking out the direct rival for the place in the candidates, of course. But who has more That's points if, uh, if uh, Nipomnes you win? Uh, Maxime is still, so, so Jan needs to win the semi-final and then the final. Mm. So if he loses in the final, it's still MBL who qualifies. Mm -hmm. So Maxime is... Uh, he's he's in, isn't in a bad spot, yeah. Uh, he like uh, playing for the qualification right now and also still will have a chance to... Yeah, even if he loses, he will still have a chance. So he will start, as we joke usually, like he will start preparing Jan's opponent in uh -huh. this case. <laughs> this is the issue. Yeah. No, but there have been some examples, I believe, like from the from the uh, past where, let's say, somewhat would, uh, someone would go and prepare the opponent of his rival. Okay, something like this we've seen before the break. Knight e2 was answered with knight b5, so black <coughs> also improves the knight, gets it to d6 to cover f5 square. A4, knight to d6, knight g3, and f7, f5 played. I have a feeling that a4 is, uh, for me, it's a bit strange move. Uh, because knight b5. I have a feeling that it was more important to uh, something like knight c4 to, uh, to activate the pieces, uh, not waste the time for a4. Because uh, obviously knight on the 6 is improving the exposition. So Maxim made two moves which looked suspicious. So over here, after g5, he played b4. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, which is a move with the tempo, understandable, but it turns out that black gets the chance to bring the queen back. Queen, mm -hmm. on, A5 was, queen on A5 was not good, and we were looking at knight E2, and then, uh -huh. as, say in case of G4, you just ignore it, you try to get the knight to F5, maybe even taking on F3 with the king, then get the knight to F5 and play from there. Mm -hmm. uh, so B4 maybe helped black a little bit. And then possibly this A4 move is once again, it's a move with the tempo, pushing the pawn forward, but maybe helps black, because after knight g3, f5, it's really not clear what um, white is supposed to do. You probably take on f5, I mean, that's the feeling, because e5, f4, right? Yes, e5 is too much. e5, f4, and, and yeah, and, and it's white king who is in trouble. Yeah, maybe we can continue a bit. Uh, four, bishop takes, g takes Take four, with and the bishop and go, knight, go to h5. Yeah, because knight f5 is not a move. Just, to, just <laughs> to point this one out, knight f5 is not a move. But there should be feeling is like there should be a move for black. Well, actually, if black is greedy, he might as well try castle short. I mean, I, I know it looks almost ridiculous, but. Not entirely sure. No, but I can take on g7, I guess. Uh, you take on g7, king g7, rook g1, rook g1 because there is, um, there is rook g6 if king goes to h8. Yeah, if king goes to f7. Queen h7, rook h6. Queen h7 and rook h6. Yeah, this looks winning. This looks winning for white. Still not sure. Even, queen even here, right? Or queen, or queen, queen b3. Three. Yes. Queen b3. Yeah, so basically that, that's what I was trying to say, that yes, it looks very dangerous for black, but white, in this case, the knight from b2 is far, far away from the king side. So basically white cannot lose all of his pieces in the king side attack. But yeah, but of course, castle short is, I mean, you only play it if it's good, but there, there could be other moves for black. Like, uh, wait a second, what happens if I take only five? D I takes, would, yes, I and then... Uh -huh. I would also consider something like long castle, if I have a time. Yeah, but I wanted to take and then to castle long. So uh -huh. Point being, now e5 is hanging, and you probably still cannot take on d6 because of uh, queen e3 check. And just winning for black. Yeah, because an immediate castle long, I thought maybe white takes on g7. Attacks the queen. It, it still looks playable for black, queen d5, yeah? Yeah, it looks like a big advantage, I guess. Yeah, but bishop e5 might be even stronger because mm -hmm. takes, you take, and then you, you threaten basically to take on e5 with the knight or the queen. Yeah, I agree. And, it and it's not clear, yeah, not clear what white is supposed to do. Uh, right, so... He was going, he's going to play f4, it seems like. Seems that we managed to rule out the e5 possibility. E f5 gives black an awfully an awful lot of squares, right? So queen, queen d5, d5 yeah, probably. Yeah, I think the most natural 
square. Then once again, castle long, rook f8, f5 is hanging, d4 is hanging. Looks very, very attractive for black. So white really needs to find a move that doesn't slow down the attack. If knight h5, rook g8 probably. Knight h5 immediately. Well, maybe now I can castle. Maybe now I can castle, because I kind of like my rook on, f on f8. e5, this will be critical, or maybe take an e5. e5, maybe even knight f7 or knight, knight e8, it's not clear, is, is white. Yeah, for instance, here, like how strong white's attack is. Yeah. Yes, I have knight b6, knight e5, or... Even if, if, if there is any attack for white, yeah. f4 is also the point. Mm -hmm. At some point, and it's 3 or 4. Yeah. And uh, this is, of course, not uh, the, the active way of black. Probably there is alternatives. Mm -hmm. So E takes a 5, played after quite a long tank from Maxime Bushilagraf. Uh, yeah, and chat uh, discussing uh, the improvements on, on MVL's play. It was uh, Bishop D2. There was a moment here where he could go bishop d2 after queen a5, but after that there was seemingly no clear way for the advantage. I have a feeling that black, is, uh, black has big advantage here. And he doesn't need big advantage, he only needs a draw. <laughs> because uh, the pawns, uh, the king is weak, the pawns is bad, okay, this is obvious things. <laughs> like queen d5, how do you even play for his wife? Maybe knight c4. Try to... I don't even know what to do. Try to simplify. I mean, not to simplify, but like to make sure that this is defended so I can go some knight e4 and knight h5, right? Now I cannot do this. Like, if I go knight h5... Well, technically I can. Knight f5 still runs into queen f5, but bishop d4 is there, for instance. Yeah, bishop d4 is there. And black will castle long any time. Yeah, the only thing... Uh, uh the only problem for Blake, of course, uh, he would like to castle long. It's more safe place for the king. But then b5 is on, on the table, so he, he has to be accurate with this idea. But otherwise, it's a very good position. Yeah, and the move I'm, I keep mentioning, castle short, also might materialize it. It really depends on how, how white is acting. Yeah, and now we can see this, uh, the why I didn't like a4 move, because knight on b2 is completely out of uh, anything. Mm, yeah, so once again, the alternative was to go knight c4 and then knight d6. We don't care all that much, right? Yeah, we can take, I think. and uh, We take, we regrettably cannot play knight g3, but uh, maybe, maybe we can... S I mean, e5, queen goes, knight g3, knight f5. Or even... Even play it in a slow way, <coughs> because no f5 for... Or is it? Maybe f5 is... is I don't possible. know, after knight d6, maybe there is knight a5. Uh, I know ah, it's... Not even trade, but I know it's, it looks very strange, but... And try to play on positional. f5, e5. e5, take on b7. Yeah. yeah. It can still be... I know, f4, now you will take, maybe, maybe take twice, yeah? Yes, and, uh, but maybe bishop d2 is also... Uh, but, uh, bishop d2 is also possible, yeah. Knight goes, we take on b7, we want to take on c6. Yeah, this is interesting, I think. Mm, yeah, so that was that was sensible alternative to a4. So one thing, but it, it's very common, I think, maybe not for such, uh, such experienced players, but typically, like, if you... Uh, look, if you are in a very aggressive mood. Mm -hmm. You typically turn to make a lot of such like moves, moves with the pawns, attack something. Yeah, I remember myself playing open tournament. <laughs> like you play the last round and you have to win basically to clinch for first. And then what you do, you <laughs> typically do not consider any lines. You, you're pretty much in the same situation. You do not consider any lines which <laughs> lead to equality. You push and sometimes you end up losing just because you didn't want to draw. Yeah, this is a very good point, because uh, uh, this is true that uh, the players has uh, 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 the mood before the game, how, uh, how, how you should play. And uh, besides the objective uh, evaluation of the position, you also uh, try to evaluate how aggressive you play, what is your chances to complicate situation or to play more safe. 
And this is what you not really uh, can um, understand, I think, completely. It's just uh, yeah. sometimes you just uh, remove all the moves, which is not aggressive enough, without any justification. You just think it's not aggressive yeah. enough. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay, that's good positional move. Boring. No, yes, I will yes, not play yes, it. Yes, I'll play this. something else. Yeah, so players are affected by the current mood, by the tournament situation, and sometimes those decisions, yeah, it's like if you check the game later on on paper and you think, why didn't he play this natural yes. move? Because it, it seemed to him that it wouldn't be aggressive enough, it wouldn't be brave enough sometimes. E5, queen d5 played. Yeah, I should probably remove some of my Okay, let's try maybe to, to, to think in more... Drawings. Maybe in a uh, more objective way. So, if uh, White uh, would not uh, necessary to win this game, what what uh, should he what, do? What what should White do? Yeah. But still, like it's not about uh, winning the game any longer. It's d4 pawn which is hanging. I don't know what. To, it's like the moment I s I'm switching to defending pawns. It's it's probably where Black is justified to be much better, right? Maybe. Actually, now I'm thinking that maybe short castle even more dangerous because if I take on a five, a rook of on a fate will yeah. be just perfect. So it's not clear. It's, um, it's like it's very nice for black to keep both options you know, and yeah. then say white prepares for castle short, black goes long castle. It yeah. seems for me that knight c4 is uh, still the critical option. Yeah, probably knight c4 is a critical because move, but then wait, but then we just. Now that I'm thinking, we just trade here. I think that even Bishop de Fook could be considered. Yeah, but under under the circumstances, I would <laughs> pretty much like get rid of the queens, go knight b6. Rook After down. rook moves, uh, maybe rook d8 first. Seems like a very pleasant end game with close to zero chance to to lose. To lose. Yeah close to zero chance to lose because white has a lot of weaknesses. It's equal material. I mean, how on earth black is supposed to be worse? And not only that, but even like sometimes you are worse, but you have some objects to attack, some, you know, some, some ways to complicate the game. Now I don't know what you have to do. I mean, yeah, some so chances that the opponent will make a mistake, yeah? Some, yes. some, some ideas. And here it, it's so simple for black. It's like, you go knight h5, fine, I'm castling. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you. you take the bishop, I'll take it, I'll take on a 5 knight goes to d5 in this case. Perfect situation, knight is better than the yes. remaining bishop for white. So really, really not sure what's happening there. So Nazi the four is not really Yeah, that doesn't seem to be an attractive options. option. Yeah, but, but what is attractive option? F no, F six just takes, yeah, and Queen F seven is there. Really hard to find the move. Move the it's, oh, no, there is no it's amazing how it how quick it become become so unpleasant. Yeah, it changed really. I mean changed a lot. Uh, rook c5 is not even a move. I was thinking, like you go queen d3, defend the pawn, but you don't even, don't even threaten rook c5. Maybe I can uh, try to regroup my b2, b2 knight once again. Maybe knight d1. I don't know. Is it too? too knight d1 to put it to c3. Okay, I understand. It's like. Well, yeah, maybe not the move we are happy to make, but we need to make some move at least, right? Yes, bishop d4, of course, is one. Yeah, bishop Critical d4 options. is one thing. After which, I'm not sure what we are doing. Yeah, we're just probably losing all, everything, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 91 is too much. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and Maxim has played the move, and it is knight c4. It is knight c4. <coughs> it's, it's a sad move to make, but... He had to do it. So now, from now on, I believe Jan is a huge favorite. Maybe not to win the game, but to win the match, right? Well, I think Nancy 4 is a very practical decision. If he will make it, he will control the situation. But after Bishop D4 is on the table, which is... Um yeah, that's a, that's a very, like, very serious test to... I mean, first of all, we, we don't know what objectively is the best move, but imagine a situation where it's clear by intuition that bishop d4 is the better move and knight mm -hmm. c4 is the safer move and that, then it's a real test <laughs> in specifically this situation in the match you're leading plus one 
and like psychologically you want it to be as safe as possible and yeah and some some people would not find courage to play bishop d4 yeah actually i, I think there is knight d6 queen d6 queen e4 you have to play bishop e5 and it's already becoming mm, ah yes a, a check bishop e5 some danger already bishop g5 i have for example oh uh, well actually yeah okay rook uh, rook d1 is also yeah it's like the feeling is like giving white a tempo to develop something is not great now black no longer wants to castle long perhaps right i mean even even some like rook d1 bishop g5 seems interesting yeah that's probably not what we want to do so maybe knight c4 is the i mean knight c4 knight takes c4 queen takes c4 should be played people in the chat calling gg so that good game black were wins so wins the match you know guys in the knockout there have been situations where people were losing like ridiculously good positions because of psychological pressure so it's still a bit too early to call it a day to claim that um, match. the match is finished but of course yeah chances for Nepomnishi improved immensely this is played I have a, a funny idea after queen takes e4, rook c4, knight b6, rook c5 and that if you take on e4 then rook e5 so this for rook e5 to get uh, a pair of connected passed pawns and actually if black captures there i believe that there can be something for white it's again one of those positions where perhaps objectively engine will criticize it but in the practical game you don't want such positions to happen if you if once again if you if you want to um, if you want to achieve a safe draw which basically means you are winning the match Yes, probably after rook e5 he can not avoid this taking and uh, uh, he, uh, he rook goes c5 for played, that. yeah, rook c5 <laughs> played, fair point. Uh, but wait a second, wasn't it uh, rook d8 we were looking about at some point? Uh, maybe long castle actually, maybe I'm thinking, this tempo. Hmm? Oh, well, long castle makes sense uh, since the rook is on c5. Because in the previous line, for some reason, I wasn't happy with long castle. When, when rook was going to c2, yeah, then castle long kind of runs into b5. And I mean, I stopped calculating right there. Maybe, maybe for no reason. Maybe black's position is still fine. Yeah, but with rook on c5, it seems like an improved version. Yeah, because for black. We, we still keep uh, knight a4 on the table. Mm hmm. <coughs> so castle's no. long. Now d4 is attacked at least we can say attack to, to a certain degree right a4 is attacked as well like for instance b5 what do we do oh we probably just take right yeah we can take uh, we take on a4 we can take on d4 also first now like the uh, bishop d4 yeah that's it's not very likely that it's going to work for white. Not very likely. Yeah, basically, I don't, I don't, I don't really see a move after castle long. So again, if you switch to defense, that not clear what move you have to play. Maybe you still go rookie five. I mean, just like that. Basically saying, I don't care. I want, I want my rook on. I mean, I want you to take the exchange. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's a knight c4. Is. Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> You're running to knight c4 and knight e3, and, and you have to go with rook again. And it looks like rook game, you know. Yeah. So the the only piece which is moving is basically a rook. Okay, but a big chance for Nipomnishi. That's that's clear. And so far, it's absolutely. I mean, it's it's impossible to predict who, uh, whom his opponent is going to be in case if Jan doesn't lose this one, because in the other semi-final it's uh, looking more and more like two draws will be the result of the classical part of the match. So once again, switching to Navara and Wei. 
of the queen before the last move we've seen there was queen a8 played c4 queen takes a2 check on c3 and rook a1 allowed david navarra to force the queen straight <laughs> Rook e2, king f7, and rook e4. So black is still technically better because of this stupid rook on h2. But even if, say, if you win the c4 pawn, like the, the, the most stupid scenario, you, you, can, you can win the c pawn, yeah, but white goes king g2, you take everything straight at rook h1, and good luck winning the, this 3 versus 2. I don't even know what, what structure has to be so that side with three pawns has a chance. I mean, it has to be like three connected against h3 and f2. Maybe, maybe this way, right? Actually, h3 and f2 is the best uh, setup, as I remember, for defense, uh, especially if g h pound, uh, if black would have. Yeah, this, it's, uh, yeah, it's this, is, this is easy draw. More easy even than two, two pounds. Here, maybe it's a little chance if I can improve my pawn on e4 and then try to make a g g5, h4 pounds and g4 at one moment to to get a pass, pass pawn. H on h5, yeah, yes. but white will have to skip like 20 moves in a row, right? Yes, and uh, usually the rook can attack the king from some side, a5, f8. Yeah, you get the rook, <coughs> let's say, to it a7 and then you I mean you basically chase those pawns I mean if uh, black puts the pawn on e5 king on f5 then you give checks from from behind so that's it's actually more. interesting psychologically what the uh, the, uh, the player who had advantage what should he do in this situation I mean to try all his chances to play seven hours eight hours game or maybe try to simplify mm. and just prepare for the tie break yeah yeah okay rook c8 play uh, no that's, okay, that's so not the position. Rook is on e4. Yeah, rook c8 played. King g oh, we'll, we'll get the same game, right? King g2 played. Any chance to keep both? Yeah, but then you're not winning the c pawn, right? Yeah, it makes I no thought, sense. I thought, like, you do this, for instance, you. Nah, you're not on time. Cannot even attack. e5, rook e1, yeah, you can't even attack it. No, so you probably take on c4 and then. Try to go from there, try to try to play three versus two. So in terms of opening idea it worked very well for worked very well for Wei. Uh, yeah, maybe because uh, we've been with Sergei Kervyakin in the studio when all that happened. Maybe I should uh, ask you as well if you have any any specific knowledge about this line. So it's the Russian system against the Grunfeld, yeah, Queen mm -hmm. B three. Takes the so same position happened in Nepomnichi's game against Lagraf yesterday. There was knight c6 here, which I thought was the main line, the more common line. b5, c5, and then the choice of many was bishop e6. Yes, sir. this is main. Right, but knight b to d7 was played by Wei. Bishop e3, and after knight g4, that's pretty much by force what uh, happens in the game. C6, black captures on E3, CD7, this piece is getting sacrificed, bishop E6. If I'm correct, I think this move, knight 7 I thought uh, how it looked strange, but it was a game, Volkov against Rizantsev. Maybe I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that uh, it was uh, the game, and Rizantsev uh, won a very nice game with black pieces. I, I have a feeling that it was knight 7 Yeah, so it was uh, the super final, well, it was super final St. St. Petersburg, yeah, uh, 17, yeah, yes. 2017. Yeah, you're right. And then I don't think knight g5 was played in that, in that game. So, because I thought that that's perhaps the only spot uh, to deviate with white. So you, you could go queen c2 or queen d1. Mm -hmm. Not that I find it attractive, because still you're playing without a rook on h1, black has a pair of powerful bishops, some rook c8, rook d8. It, it's very easy to play with black. So without uh, specific preparation, you probably do not enter this one. This at least allows you to simplify the game a little bit. So you capture on e6, and it looks pretty forced from there on. Yeah, it's hard rook to f1, imagine. F1, rook f4. Yeah, you're going to have to go at 3 because queen g5 is a, is a huge threat to rook f8. Yeah, interestingly, this line immediately was not working because of queen to 
d5 and then the rook on a8 is, is hanging. So rook a8, white goes rook h2, has to guard h, uh, f, the f2 pawn, and yeah, and basically uh, we've reached uh, that position. So after knight g5, it's like a forced draw? Mm, seems so, unless uh, black, uh, it, it looks like if, if any side can improve, it, it, it's black. Yeah. All right, and, and, and what do we have here? Black captures the pawn, rook h1, rook a1. So still, of course, we should try, I believe, but not very, not very realistic that he's going to have a real shot. Yeah, this is quite obvious. Uh, for two. We can easily see. Oh, wait. And we have, we have a result in MVL's game against Jan, and I suspect MVL has offered a draw, more or less resigning the match, because that, that's the only result I can think of. You know, well, his position is not bad enough to resign with White, right? And it's not possible that uh, Jan would lose this one. As, as that quickly. Yeah, it is a draw, it's official. So, Jan Nepomnici is in the final of Jerusalem Grand Prix already. Um, Jan will need to win. So, now it's his match for the spot in the candidates. Interestingly, if he loses it and Maxim goes to the candidates, Jan will have one more match to in enter Russia. the candidates. Yes, it will be a match between him and Kirill Alexenko, so two Russian players who are eligible for the wild card. You know, this is uh, the one point you can say there is a lot of chances at, at another when you have too, mu too much chances uh, and you still cannot fix one. Psychologically, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's getting uh, harder and harder, right? I mean, so, so it's like you... You miss one chance after the other, and at some point, uh, well, you stop believing in yourself. Mm, yeah, maybe have to show like a couple of last moves that were played in Boshia's game. Uh, uh, knight b6, rook c5, and Jan decided to castle short immediately. After a5, knight to d5, a6, a draw was agreed. Mm. Well, probably he, he was like, uh, maybe I mean, there was something concrete that was maybe uh, B8 disturbing him. Uh, just, just rook b8, yeah? Yeah, I want to activate my rook. I can take and after rook c6, rook c8. <coughs> but rook b8 I like even more. Actually, there is knight, b, knight b4 also, uh, yeah, right away. That's what I thought, that actually kind of knight b4 first. Ah, uh, wait, no, uh, there is also... This, right? Yes. So this ah. rook b8 and knight d3 is a threat. And also what I like even most, maybe rook e8 first, rook a8 first. Before taking the pawn. Yes. Ah, so rook e8 first. <laughs> it well, seems white like probably will have... Uh, maybe there was a right moment to offer a draw <laughs> because uh, black's position is very close to winning. Yeah, maybe, you know, even better. Uh, also rook, rook, d, rook d8, rook d1. Yeah, after rook e8, f f5 is also hanging, yeah? So you cannot play knight e4. Or you can play, but... What do you even do <laughs> after rook e8? Yeah, it feels like if the draw was not offered, uh, black already has a huge advantage here. Yeah, yeah. we can ask chat if, if uh, the chat will, you know... If uh, the chat will en enlighten us on what's the, what's the actual evaluation after a6 is. Because we keep finding like more and more promising ways for black. Yeah, rook a to e8 was the pr uh, the best move after e6. Cool. Yeah. So this match is over. Maxim is out of the tournament, but not yet out of the candidates. Uh, what do you think? Who is the most uh, difficult opponent against Jan? Uh, whom, uh, with whom he will be more unpleasant to play? Mm, uh, or Navarra? Hard to say. I, I don't know the history of him playing Navarra because Wei, I believe Jan has won against Wei in the semi-finals or was it quarter-finals of Moscow Grand Prix? They, they've met. They've mm -hmm. met, and, and Jan won quite convincingly on tiebreak. They they played 
two draws in classics, and then on tiebreak, Jan was uh, like dominant, completely dominant. And somehow, historically, it feels that Jan, I mean, it's once again, it's very strange to say so, but Jan, as far as I remember, has very good results against Chinese players. Mm -hmm. Which is maybe nowadays it's a, it's a little bit uh, stupid to you know to draw such parallels, but there was a moment in not that long ago that the players from China, the top players from China, they were playing the same opening repertoire. They were following mm -hmm. the same opening repertoire. They were playing in a way in the similar style, kind of a bit computer-like and sometimes like greedy style. So you would you would actually kind of try to keep the score against the Chinese players, not against uh, everyone in particular. Now, of course, th th that's, a, that's a different story. You have Ding Li Ren, you have Wei Yi, absolutely different styles, and Ding Li Ren, of course, is, for the time being, is much uh, higher rated and probably just like stronger player. Uh, player. Yeah, but if, yeah, if, if I'm trying to track back this year, it's like Yan wins the decisive game in the world teams, against yes. Yu Yang I believe it was. It was once, I remember he won a game against Ding Li Legion. It was also World Teams, but I think it was in Hunter Mansisk. Mm, yep. I know, Hunter Mansisk crashing team lost, uh, so it was in, in, in that tournament. Well, uh, uh, personally, I, s uh, I think that uh, uh, with Wei, Wei Yi will be more difficult match, but of course, David is also a player who can uh, play very, very good. Yeah, it's like with, with David Navarro, you never know because he's like he's such a uh, well, such a player that he can more or less lose to anyone, just because he he had a you know a bad mood and and today was not his day. But at the same time, he's capable of beating nearly everybody. So it will be. So you're less certain of what's going to happen if you face Navarro. That's that's the feeling. But anyway, Jan will find himself under serious pressure, I believe, in any case, because that's, you know, going through the season, keeping chances and not... Uh, I mean, first of all, he had to keep the composure after losing in round one in Hamburg, because that was a huge blow. Because when, when the whole thing started, the Grand Prix series, and Jan won the first leg in Moscow, it's... Yes. It's a huge step in the, uh, to the candidates, and you, you would think, oh, okay, the job is done. But then get, getting knocked out in the very first round, that's, that's already tough, right? Ah, people say, according to chess games, Navarra has plus against Jan Nepomnici, so plus one, mm -hmm. one win, zero losses, only one draw. Yeah, this is actually, <coughs> this is, can be important, so... Maybe Jan don't know him very well. This is, can be. Yeah, so that's maybe not relevant statistics in terms of pluses and minuses, but what is relevant that only two games played. So they, they, maybe they didn't play each other all that much. Also, you know, I think the important thing uh, uh, is uh, how, uh, uh, how they will feel to play against Jan, because it is obvious that he's playing for candidate plays, and uh, you know, mm, you can feel a bit. Um, Unpleasant about that you are not fighting for this place and you stopping the player after uh, yeah, a huge it's season. Like, okay, it's not yeah, for I, the I, I do understand what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like player who basically doesn't have a chance plays yes. against. So, so th that means this match will mean different things for the players yes. involved. So one is playing for the prize, for the money, and the other one plays for really a huge step in his entire career. Yeah, that's also and th and then it it will actually. Yeah, depending on the character of the other player, it will yes. also affect them in a the different way. Some will feel more motivated, maybe, and you know, and the others, like um, I'm thinking, like uh, Peter Swidler, for instance, he would he would be a little bit reluctant to play, you know, good chess because the other guy kind of needs it so <laughs> much. Yes, not to stop him, not to be the person who is stop him yeah, in such important moments. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening here? Seems like uh, they're about to start. Oh, well, they're not really repeating just yet, but uh, it doesn't seem that Black will be able will be able to make any progress. Yeah, this is what uh, we mentioned. Black uh, uh, placed the rook on the 
awkward position on f6. It's obviously not active. And now it's it's on f5. Okay. In order to defend defend against checks. Uh, ah, okay. Well, actually, there is some pattern I can see for black. Like if white. Okay, let's say white cooperates, goes king g3, which is probably a terrible move. Then h4, and then we go here. Then we want to play. Uh, wait a second. Want to play e4 and rook g5, but probably still it it goes nowhere. No, but uh, rook I just check. I, I have to check. Or check, yeah, check first. And then f3. Ah, there is f3 as well. Yeah, it's just like immediately over. I mean, draw, draw, agreed. Yes, even a check is possible. Uh, maybe maybe I should start with e, uh, e4. You, you do the same, right? Yes. You, you just attack the pawn so that if king f4 happens, you have f3. Because even if, let's say, okay. if there is no f3, I don't know how black is supposed to make progress here. Uh, this is maybe uh, g5, g4. At, uh, this is what I wanted. Uh, but isn't it a draw still? It's like with f pawn, it will be the reincarnation of this uh, end game, which happened many times. I mean, basically this structure in black's rook elsewhere, right? Yes. Rec in the recent history, there was this uh, famous uh, game in the candidates, uh, Aronian Nakamura, right? After which I believe everyone <coughs> has checked it, learned that this is a draw, and by that time already forgotten how to make this draw. Yeah, this is actually not not easy, not easy draw. Have to defend uh, with, with the with S pawn. Yeah. Yeah. With G pawn, I'm not sure because you get it to G. Okay, let's say white is kind enough. Oh, it's black to move. White is kind enough to just sit and wait. And how do you make progress then? Might be just um, a, just a draw anyway. No, my my uh, best idea would be yes to play H3 and then try to uh, to force your no, king but to but go. But I, I can actually take. Ah, yeah, can take, I yeah. can actually take. Uh, and, and I'm afraid <coughs> even rook f3 I can take. Can I? Yeah, it looks like I can take on f3 as well. Oh, I don't think you can. Because uh, I will force you uh, to play here. Ah, the triangulation, I go yes. back and then... Let's yes. see. I mean, just a <coughs> junk science to, 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 to figure out if it's... I'm unable to calculate, therefore... No. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not on time, but one tempo. And, and King E2, the active move actually, this <laughs> is to King G3. And hurry up, going back. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah suddenly. Yeah. Saying, oops. <laughs> oops. Didn't work. <laughs> Pardon for that. Uh, yeah, Let, let's update on what's the actual position. Yeah, Black, Black still can try to get this one. So King F. So it will be played for like few, few mo more moves and maybe dozens of moves. But yeah, it, it, I, if we, if we look at way E, yeah, it doesn't it, seem to be like believing himself, yes, right? That, doesn't, that it's doesn't possible to Doesn't feel that he's it. motivated too much. It also, I have a feeling that this is boring for him. Also, he already like sitting and waiting. Waiting is the best mo moment to finish the game. Yeah, it's once again, it's uh, precisely as you mentioned, it, it, it's a strange situation because you have the advantage. So, like, it, it's no longer about winning the game because yes. let's agree it's maybe less than 1% chance that between two good players this ends uh, <coughs> somewhere else than a draw. But you have the advantage. It's, it's all about psychological thing, right? You have the advantage you want to press, or you think maybe I'll become more tired than my opponent and, and I actually just, just want to, to play the tiebreak tomorrow. Because if, if it's a long match, I believe, if it's like, I don't know, World Championship 12, match, uh, 12 games match, then probably you, you just torture your opponent for as long as you can. Because that's, that's like, the tension is building up and sometimes it would be like eight draws in a row before one player wins the, wins the game. But... Yeah, the moment you get the advantage, like Carson against uh, Fabi in the very first game. He didn't win the, the single game, though. But, yeah, remember, after 
spoiling the winning position in game one that was, right, mm -hmm. with Black, and then yes. he was hovering around for 100 moves in the Rook N game that everyone knew was a draw. I think important uh, part, uh, do you enjoy of what is happening? Do you enjoy torturing your because, opponent? Because yeah. I know Some the, people the, do. The story about Vladimir Malakhov, uh, once he got an endgame, uh, he was Rook against Rook and Knight. And uh, he was absolutely sure that he will not lose this endgame. And uh, he didn't uh, fix the 50 moves, you know. He just uh, ah, so he, he he kept continued playing, uh, yeah? getting increments, uh, waiting, then his opponent will psych psychologically collapse and say, OK, <laughs> I cannot do anything here. So, oh, yeah, because so he was so confident and enjoyed the situation, OK, so he was ready to continue any, any numbers of moves. Actually, I think this is a good moment we can discuss uh, uh, the idea of Vladimir Kramnik about cha changing of rules. Uh. Oh, well, that, that's funny because that was the question I asked Sergei Karyakin, and now mm -hmm. you are raising it to yourself. No, I think because this is a very important uh, topic uh, to discuss uh, what, uh, what we think about. Uh, so, do we get rid of the quote unquote old chess? So, we, we, we <laughs> basically no longer play the game we used to play, and we start playing without castles, right? That, is that the idea of uh, Vladimir Kramnikov? Yeah. Or it's just another variant of chess? That's, that's what uh, the part I, I'm kind of missing. So let's say we, we, we just play <coughs> chess without castle, but, but then, then there'll be a lot of people asking for Fisher Random. So why not Fisher Random then? Yeah, it depends on uh, what uh, we expect about the developing of computers and the th theory. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, in the past years it, uh, the theory grows too much and uh, already many lines where we have uh, concrete knowledge is uh, what is the result. It's not like an unclear game or something, an interesting game. It's already a draw, win, loss. And uh, because of that I have a feeling that some changes is just necessary. The question is uh, uh, what is uh, the best uh, way to change? My personal feel, feeling that uh, um, Probably, the, the finally, at tw after 20 years or 30 years, it will be like we, ha we will have to change uh, the setup or some rules, maybe even mm, every 10 years like that. Because, for example, we make a change. After 10 years, again, we realize that we already know a lot about the situation, and we will need some more changes. And uh, uh, from my point of view, the official random is a very good possibility gives for, for, for this. Uh yeah, because it's like uh, computers will <coughs> become like ridiculously powerful, but uh, human memory still has its limits. And even if, say, if you have the complete set of 960 positions analyzed, <laughs> nobody will be able to memorize that and tell the difference between, ah, oh, no, yeah, this, this uh, brilliant opening line was in the <laughs> other position where the knight was in the corner and not the bishop. Yeah. Right, so that, that kind of loses the point of um, trying to memorize all the theory. Yeah, and also the question is what uh, do we uh, uh, appreciate in chess the most? Uh, what do you like? I mean, of course, uh, the beauty of uh, home uh, preparation, uh, some strat new strategic idea is an uh, important part. But on my opinion, uh, the way uh, when you can see the ideas which found over the board, uh, for, for me, is much more interesting, especially because uh, over the board, even if your idea is not uh, correct, but you find it um, more, uh, you make it in more practical way. Uh, just, uh, just remember the games, for example, of Michael Tal. Uh, yeah, precisely. Like a, a lot of his combinations were refuted later on. Yes. But, but yeah, under the <coughs> pressure, you know, sitting on the stage with your clock ticking, it's not that easy. Yes, and, uh, and uh, we still, I still enjoy very much of uh, these games because uh, the the way of his fantasy was going uh, was just amazing. You know, it was a really uh, different beauty of chess, in my opinion. And I think that if we will have more freedom over the board, for the players, I mean, it will lead again for the more uh, beautiful ideas. Yeah, know. more spectacular play, so to speak. Because now, yes, we all talk about this mysterious, deep opening preparation and stuff, and everyone likes to mention it, uh, you know, during the interviews, like every, every single top player says, yeah, we, we, we worked a lot, we had the training, and th then they, ended up, they end up playing rookie one against the Berlin, swap all the pieces, make yes. a draw in 20 moves. So, <laughs> guys, yeah, we appreciate your deep preparation, but show something. Yes, uh, and uh, I can tell you that players don't enjoy the situation. Uh, yeah, completely. absolutely. It's not like <laughs> players are happy with this. It's just the, the state of the game is such. Yeah. Maybe we can 
talk a bit of a bit unhealthy state of the game at the current current moment. So some changes might be needed in, like adjusting the time control, adjusting this or that. Maybe the system, like like once again this idea of uh, playing the knockout, the elimination system, and having the tiebreak prior to the the actual classical match. So so that we have one player who lost the tiebreak already under pressure. That yes. Maybe that's also. I mean, there, there were there were a lot of. Uh, um, people kind of coming up with this idea and maybe, maybe that works. Yeah, our chat discussed it that uh, Fisher Random, a lot of positions in Fisher Random look unappealing. Yeah. Yeah, but we can uh, figure out which is, uh, which is good, which is not. Uh, uh, I, I, I also remember the idea that uh, uh, we should uh, avoid these draws, yeah, to make, for example, stale, stale, stalemate uh, as a win for one side. But personally, I don't think that this is a good idea because uh, one of the very beautiful things in chess is, uh, is uh, resources which you can find in different situations. And this is all because of this drawish possibility. And yeah, I think well, actually, stalemate, yeah. And, yeah. And, or let's say a lot of beautiful studies and also escapes in the practic practical games come from the fact that, let's say, the H pawn with the wrong bishop doesn't win, or yes. two knights doesn't, do not checkmate the bear yeah. king. So yeah. it's been a lot of ideas and a lot of opening theory kind of built on this. Yeah, to I lose that part will be unpleasant. I think that generally this is good uh, thing in chess because uh, the be because uh, the level of defense is also very important things uh, to understand. It's not like we uh, we want every day everybody let's say dying <laughs> as, yeah. as, as we compare uh, the game to the life. Uh, to to believe that you always have a chance, I think this is very good good thing. Uh, so, uh, coming back to Vladimir Kramnik's uh, suggestion, I think that uh, generally this is a good idea to start with. So, to, to, to start... To, to try, to, 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 to see where it leads. Yeah, yeah to start, uh, to change the rule of the game for once. Uh, what he suggests is not really critical change, uh, changing. For, uh, it look, doesn't look like critical changing. And maybe after five or ten years, yeah. we will understand that this is not such a big thing to change uh, the rules. And then we will... Uh, may, may, maybe the chess board will be ready for more uh, changes. Yeah, so the question is, like, how does that affect the game? Does it become more drawish or less drawish? That's, that's basically, I believe, uh, the main and the only question chess, uh, you know, uh, chess uh, people who, who watch chess, this, you know, the crowd is uh, caring about. They don't really care if it's uh, like a harmonious starting position or, or anything. Will it be more draws or less draws? Because opposite castles will not be possible. <laughs> so basically, like in 90% of the games, you will have white king on f1 and then maybe go into g2 later on and black king on f8 and go into g8. So I don't know. I mean, there were some example games provided, right? Yes. Uh, and, and they were very interesting games. Indeed. Yeah, it was, yeah, the logic of the games was completely different from what we know now. And I would add uh, that I think it, uh, it's uh, more, uh, more precisely to say that it's not about only draws. It's about uh, do we have new ideas? Do we, do we have some uh, interesting setups? And uh, uh, when you got Berlin uh, a thousand times with the same ideas, same, same, moves, same moves, you're already just tired. And uh, even if it's a draw, let's say today, Jan, they made a draw, but it was okay, very interesting, exciting yeah, game. We, we don't care, I mean, if like, Nearly all the draws will be yeah, like this. as entertaining and as as rich as this one, because basically it was like a new idea very early in the opening, and then one side having the advantage probably in well, there was certainly a point where Maxim had an advantage. Then in the final position, it seems that Jan had the advantage already, so that that's a fine draw, right? Yeah, because the beauty of chess is where you can stop to see the position, to find ideas, uh, to to find discover ideas, and you enjoy the process. If you like chess, you generally enjoy this process. You not just watch uh, the cross table and see, oh, okay, he's win, he's draw, and okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, <laughs> precisely. And uh, the, yeah, and, and the now that that's uh, pretty much what's happening. So the top players they are competing in their ability to, you know, to analyze the Berlin till the very end, or the Kronfeld till the very end, and it's not, I mean, maybe they enjoy the process, which I, I doubt, to be honest, because it's basically, it's hitting the button when, you know, hitting the space button when the engine is deep enough. Yeah. 
Okay, so generally, uh, and what is your opinion about this? So, do uh, you think this good idea, or generally to make some changes? Try, yeah, yeah. I, th I think some changes have to be made. It just I'm not sure if we should start with like kind of trying to modify the system of play or the game itself, mm -hmm. because if you look at blitz and rapid tournaments, mm -hmm. they are still fun to watch. There's a, a lot of results and. Maybe the concept of uh, the strongest players being the ones who do not make mistakes is outdated, right? Now that everyone at home has the engine, everyone at home, yeah, like, like I'm casting with the help of a chat and they actually are kind of approving, oh, dude, for a, for a change, you, you found the correct variation, right? <laughs> uh, so maybe we no longer have to think of, oh yeah, those are the grandmasters, th those are gods and what, what they play is always correct, because it's not true. And therefore, we should not give them that much time. So it will mm -hmm. be understandable. They will make mistakes. The one who makes less mistakes is going to win the tournament. And, so, and then it will be the opposite. will praise their choices, which kind of match the first, you know, the, fir the first choice of an engine. So maybe to start with this. Like modifying the rules, yes, I can see it. But it happened so that the chess world was always very conservative, right? Like the moment uh, they've um, uh, changed the format from, you know, up to certain number of wins match to 24 games match. Yes. The general public was not happy. I mean, the World Championship, when it was changed, like somewhere in the 70s or something, yeah, or, or early in the 60s, yeah. And then general public was not happy because that seemed to be a very, very short match, just 24 classical games, you know. <laughs> yeah, so we are very, very conservative society and, and, and we don't like changes, but it seems inevitable, like in, in 2019, in 21st century, we, we, we still have tournaments which are running for a month. And, yeah, and sometimes like, well, we don't have a single decisive game by the end of the World Championship match. Well, I have a feeling that we should not mix uh, the time control and the rules of chess uh, because uh, uh, what we have in a long game, we still have very nice ideas. Uh, the, uh, the really, uh, we can say, the fly uh, of, of the minds. We still have it. Uh, and computers do not explain. Uh, uh, I, I still can see some games where computers don't understand what is happening. And uh, when you listen to the players, you really see that it was a fantastic uh, flight of the minds. And uh, I believe that we should not, uh, um, not waste it somehow. Yes, you can say that today uh, we have thousand games of top class players play, pl playing every year. And it's hard to follow every single game. But generally this is what, we, uh, what the, chess is, uh, uh, the chess legacy is built on. The best games, uh, the best ideas, the best minds. And I think this is a very important part of chess. So I personally think that uh, the chess shows what we have now with Bleed, with Rapid. It's very good. It's very good to attract uh, to chess. It's very good to spend time, to enjoy uh, watching the tournaments and so on. But uh, uh, the chess legacy is a very important part, part of that. And uh, I believe that changing the rules of the game is, is, a, is a more promising way in this point of view. And uh, the then limiting the time control. Yes, yeah? yes. So uh, I believe that uh, the best thing what could happen uh, is that we will develop, uh, let's say, the show format with Bleeds, Rapid, and uh, uh, some short time because... Blindfold? Blind <laughs> blindfold. Blindfold also, yeah. And, uh, uh, and also changing uh, the rules for the long, for the long games, keeping it uh, more, more interesting for, uh, for, for brainstorming, let's say. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somehow the perception is like it's fine to have, uh, you know, like faster tournaments with faster time controls, but uh, we as chess community, I believe, can agree that we still want uh, the World Championship match to be classical, to be long, you know, to be like kind of the massive tournament where yeah, we really know, by the end of the match, we really know that the guy, the guy who w wins is really you know, deserves it. You know, I, I can uh, share, I have uh, experience, uh, lucky experience with training with Mark Doretsky, uh, the famous coach, and uh, what is his, ha uh, his head uh, in these trainings, what I have experience about is that uh, chess is very deep. Is uh, n n 
many times I have this feeling that I was looking at the positions that I already knew everything about uh, it. Let's say I already understood all ideas, calculated most of the lines, but still uh, he found the situation where there is something very, very deep. And when you got, uh, uh, and when you coach this feeling that uh, there is something inside, something very beautiful, something unexpected, it's it, 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 uh, like changing your brain, you know, physically, you can feel it, that suddenly you see and you see uh, it's uh, in absolutely different way. And I believe that this process is very useful for, for the human, for the kid, let's say, if we imagine that the kid is training chess, because it helps in the life also to go deeper and deeper and then to find some interesting solutions. This is something what you cannot do in training blitz or rapid. You simply have no time for that. Yeah, I would agree on this till certain degree, because to understand, say, what Mark Dvoretsky was uh, teaching, right, I'm afraid, like, there is no way back to real life. I mean, in a way, it's, it's like you, <laughs> you become a chess professional by that point, or yes, a very yes. strong, strong player. So, so um, uh, I mean, if we are talking about like teaching kids how to play chess, so that uh, helps them in, say, real life decision making. Yes. Which is, there is a lot of claims that this is useful. I'm, I'm well, not 100% convinced, but yeah, it is in a way. Yeah, it is still certain degree, but it's just like I, I don't want everyone to become a chess professional. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be too much. Uh, yeah, but of course I agree that like slow-paced thinking over the position, like finding new and new layers, that that's of course the beauty of the game, and that's something to to learn and to admire. And speaking of the semi-final game, which is still going, yes. I'm trying to understand what it's all about. Because I was in this position, I was actually looking for the way to maybe to lose for white you know, and I can't necessarily find those. I can tell you a funny story which is of course not, uh, not, not it about this game but uh, generally what feeling can we can imagine. I, once I played in uh, Pardubice, Czech Open tournament, very famous big tournament mm -hmm. in Czech and I met an uh, international uh, master I think and it was somehow a difficult game for for me. I was defending all, all the all, through the all the game. I was black, and finally I got the position uh, with a pawn like I was black on g3 and rook on f2. My king was on g2, and he had a queen. Okay, I knew that it's easy draw. For oh, the, the fortress, right? So, yes. So you just move the rook, uh, defended by pawn, and he yes. cannot win. Yeah. Then you have g pawn uh, uh, far far enough, and your king. king uh, mm, before, uh, before it, uh, it's an easy draw, and uh, I, I couldn't understand. Uh, he was pushing a lot, you know, trying his best efforts. He was trying to make me somehow. It's uh, and I couldn't understand what is going really, <laughs> what is what's really going, going on. on yeah. Yes, and uh, later after the game, he just was very surprised at his draw. <laughs> ah, interesting. So the guy was uh, international master was playing this yes. position without uh, knowing that it's uh, this this big fire. You know, he was sure that he have to find the win. Okay, here is not the yeah. same story, but we could imagine this. So we <laughs> well, this was yeah. Can we can we have it back on the screen? Because if I see it correctly, mm -hmm. if I see it correctly, Navarro has played the move uh, which I wanted to suggest when I said I want to lose with White. You wanted to suggest this F three. Uh, he wants to uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So. First of all, this is just a draw, right? Doesn't matter where the king is going. Yes. E5, yeah. We trade, and this is just a draw. So you keep the king on the third rank, yes. and there is no... That's like... The opposition doesn't help because it's an H-pawn, right? In this position, G4, if there is one more file, if there is I file, a J file, and so on and so on, then black would be winning, but... Since it's the, that's the rook pawn, it's of course just a draw. Uh, but my question is that after f3, draw moves like king g7, for instance. There is a capture with a check. So I'm really not sure that white needed all that. Really not sure if white needed all that, because it seems that he could deal with this position without f2, f3. And I believe uh, our time... One air has come to an end, the game is still going, and they're waiting for you in the Russian studio, Ernesto. So thanks very much for joining.
Thank you. Always Vinny. a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, guys, for watching us. I'll be back in a few minutes to continue with this last game of the semi final.
Uh, welcome back, guys. If uh, there is still anyone around, uh, well, we've missed the finish of the last game. David Navarra and Wei agreed a draw, same as in the previous game, the Rook end game, which led to a total elimination of both armies. So two kings left in the final position. We can quickly go through the last few moves and the. The idea that i uh, that I was that I had doubts about F3 happens to be, in fact, yeah, we later on discussed uh, with uh, Grandmaster in our Kiev, happens to be perhaps the fastest way to make a draw for for White. So the Rook F3 variation is very easy. It's a check, capture on F3, and we've already looked through this. It, it's really, really. I mean, it, it's nothing to do. White simply keeps the king on e3 and f3, and that'll be it. So black decided to capture with the pawn, after which king f2. And it turns out that black pieces are so awkwardly placed that he can't really make progress. King e7, and this perhaps needs a bit of explanation. Why this weird move and like not quote-unquote active king e5? Because then white would go with a check. That's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. If you go to the F file, it's a check again, right? And basically you don't have a place to hide because the moment you start crawling back with the king, I mean, or say to H6, and then eventually you are able to run away from those checks. But then white goes rook E8, Next move, rook e3, na next move, capture on f3. So that um, explains why it was king e7 to prevent rook e8 perhaps, but then rook goes to a8, rook f5, rook goes to a3, king f6, and white captures on f3. So the last test would have been king to e5 perhaps, after which... Well, maybe it's not that easy to misplay the position. Ah, yeah, well, well, white actually can take on f5. No, that, that's just a draw, just the same draw we had. Ah, so rook f3, g4, the rest was unnecessary. g4 takes, trade on f3, king g5, but of course this last remaining pawn, h2, and Navarra didn't take it, and h1 knight. So last few moves were like kind of a comedy a little bit. Uh, yeah, but the game itself was very, very interesting and perhaps theoretically important. I mean, in terms of opening theory, this rather fresh line with knight, starting with knight bd7 instead of bishop e6, needs further testing, needs further analysis, but this game has shown that perhaps that's just a legit way to play uh, for black. So, to sum it up, the results of the semi-finals. Two draws in Navarra versus Wei match, and a draw today, and a victory for Jan uh, Nepomnishi overall against Maxim Vashielograf. So Jan Nepomnishi is in the finals already, will enjoy the free day before the actual decisive match. To remind you, after this victory, Jan Nepomnishi has to win the final in order to uh, take the second spot in the Grand Prix and therefore advance to the candidates. Wei in Navarra will battle it out tomorrow on yet another tiebreak. So tomorrow we'll be uh, back, I'll be back in the studio, few minutes to 3 p.m. local time in Jerusalem, adjust to your, adjust to your time zone accordingly. And one more time, let's Thank those who supported chess throughout the year, who made this event and entire Grand Prix cycle possible. So, once again, it's for Sagro, strategic partner of World Chess and entire Grand Prix series, Algorand, the blockchain partner, Kaspersky, the cybersecurity partner, and Ustech, the partner of the event in Jerusalem. And uh, thanks again. It was a pleasure casting for you guys. It was, it was a bit of an easier day today, a shorter day, plus a couple of guests in the studio. So make sure to tune in tomorrow and see you then.